I would just want to uh, call the finance committee. Can't, can't hear me? I can hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. Um, I want to call the finance committee meeting to order. Are there any other committees here that um, have a quorum that need to be called to order? School committee or? Um, but you didn't post though, right? You're not meeting. Yeah, you're not meeting. <laughs> Um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, going to be discussing the town finances. Uh, going to get, have a presentation by Sharon and Bob about uh, past year and uh, the 2019 budget. Um, we're also going to be talking about an override and um, a lot of times people wonder why the town needs an override it's um, it's an operational override it's not for any specific reason people seem to think that you know we need a fire truck we need an override or we need a school or something like that uh, for debt exclusion but this is really just an operational override um, it's the the problem is that um, the budget is being squeezed by things like health costs and pension, um, and those are represent about 18% of the budget and are growing at a six or seven percent rate, and that uh, equates to one and a quarter percent of the overall budget. Um, so, with that kind of pressure and Proposition two and a half only allowing for a uh, two and a half percent increase to property taxes. It doesn't leave much room for other expenditures in the budget. Um, I don't know how many people either attended last night's selections meeting or watched it on television, but there are some good presentations by the um, police and, and fire departments about the pressure that they're feeling, the fact that the uh, staff has remained level or, or declined over the years um, to the point where um, you know, not to say that uh, public safety is endangered, but it's certainly feeling pressure. Um, the other thing we're going to be discussing tonight is the use of free cash to support the budget, and um, we recognize that uh, free cash isn't really revenue and can't be relied on, but because of the conservative practices that we have in forecasting the uh, revenues and expenses, um, we do tend to generate free cash. And um, I mean, if you didn't use it, it would just uh, continue to grow. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but uh, when it forces uh, constraints on the budget, um, you know, it's um, to use the free cash that we're generating is not uh, not a huge negative, so um, I don't know if there's uh, anything else you want to say, but um, I think I'll just hand it over to Chairman and Bob. Thanks, Peter. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Okay. No. 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 Okay. How about now? you want me to go over yeah. these meetings? So these are the um, budget meetings that we have planned um, in 2018 for fiscal 19's budget. October 11th is today, obviously. Um, school committee is meeting on December 18th, January 8th, January 11th, the 16th, and the 18th. And the Board of Selectmen are meeting on the 12th, 13th, 19th, and 20th of December. I should look at this. Um, January 18th, the school committee is going to vote their budget, and then on January 24th, the finance forum, or the second finance forum, will take place. January 30th, the town manager's budget um, will go to FinCom, and on February 7th, FinCom school budget, um, and then February 8th, the town budgets are going to be presented. February 14th, FinCom others for other items to be discussed, and then on February 15th, FinCom will vote the budget and the articles. So I'm going to start by talking about the results of Fiscal 17 and where our regeneration of free cash is coming from. So in Fiscal 17, revenues came in $1.3 million over projection. And what's listed on the slide are the, are the items that had surpluses <coughs> over budget. The items, items in green um, are 
the items that we think are su possibly sustainable and the ones that have the, um, the stars are basically considered somewhat one-time payments. For example, the investment income, for, for instance. I believe that a large portion of that investment income overage is because we had money, capital money, um, sitting in our accounts earning interest that we do not budget for because as a general rule, those are one-time things. Um, and so that is a one-time payment that we believe that we're getting there because we don't always have large sums for capital sitting in our bank account. Sure. Yeah. Please talk Sorry, you can't hear? <coughs> Lower? Okay, can you hear me now? Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, swallow the mic. <laughs> so the, the investment income we're not considering to be sustainable because the money that we're earning that's over budget is related to money that we're holding for capital projects. And we don't always have that money, so we don't normally budget for that. The, the item for FEMA storm reimbursement is for a storm that took place in 2014, and we're just getting the money in fiscal 17. So we would not know if we were getting reimbursement or when we were going to get it. Um, so we never budget for things that we don't know for sure we're going to get. And so those items that are starred are the, those types of items. Miscellaneous has um, some things that do occur, it seems like, every year, but aren't guaranteed. For instance, miscellaneous has um, Maya dividends and participation rewards that we get from our, our insurance provider that they're not guaranteed. They vary in amount year to year, and so we don't budget for them. So they do tend to be turned over to free cash each year. But we can't count on them, so we don't budget for them. So that's why they're noted as one-time payments. The expenses came in 1.66 million under budget, so that's additional regeneration of free cash. Capital expenses came in under by 170, employee benefits 140, school salaries um, for open positions, turnover, leave of absence had savings of 189, out of district special ed had um, savings of 169 or 169,000. And then school other various items within the school budget saved 93000 In the town, we also had issues with salaries and open positions, and we had 478 there. But it should be noted that um, at the end of the fiscal year, we asked for a large sum from um, FinCom reserves for fire overtime. But it turned out we had some excess on the public safety end from the police department, so we're pretty much turning back what we asked for. <laughs> Um, so it ended up being we didn't need as much as we asked for. There are various expense items for 242, so those would be items that were turning back 20000 or less, so I grouped them together. Property and legal, about 35000 each was turned back, um, so that was under budget by 35000 each. Veterans benefits, various items under our benefit, veterans benefits came in under budget by 62000 and debt service under by 43000 <coughs> This is our free cash for the last five years, and I just want to explain how this is calculated. Um, so we start off with the certified free cash at the beginning of the year that's certified by DOR. Then you add in any regeneration that's created from revenue over budget, and then you add in expenses under budget, and then you net out whatever you, you used for free cash since it was last certified. And then you have adjustments. And the adjustments are made up of prior year money that's been brought forward and closed out, um, other financing sources and uses. And then also we sometimes are deducting um, funds that actually ended the year at a deficit. And the way that works is our grants are largely reimbursement. So we pay our money out, and then we ask the state or the federal government to pay us. So at June 30th, if they're in a deficit, it's as if they borrowed money from the general fund. And so they get deducted. But if we get the money by September 30th, I don't have to deduct them. So you don't see any negatives there. But we do have some small balances that we net out. So that's where those would show up on that other adjustment to free cash. So you'll see for fiscal 17, we have just over $8.5 million of free cash. Um, based on my calculation, that's a non-certified number. All the other numbers you see there are certified. And this is a 15-year um, analysis of free cash in a visual form for you to look at. 
I also projected out fiscal 18 and 19 as if um, free cash potentially would go down by 500,000, just knowing that we went down by 700,000 over the last year. So this is our reserve position currently. So we take our free cash, and we also have about $1.6 million of stabilization funds and then FinCom reserves. So that gives us just over 10 point, or just under $10.3 million of reserves, which represents about 11% of our projected revenues for fiscal 18 and is in excess of our FinCom minimum reserve policy. So based on what we know about actual performance in fiscal 17, I looked at um, whether or not any of our budget items for fiscal 18 should be revisited. And the one that came to mind at first was motor vehicle excise. We've been increasing it year after year to try and kind of keep it in line with what actuals are, and it just seems to keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> and so you can see in fiscal 17, we had $3.72 million of actual revenue in this area, and the fiscal 18 budget is 3.65. Um, and so I feel that it might be advantageous for us to actually increase it by 100000 because it is an ever-growing item for us. As far as property taxes go, because it's um, already been included in the tax base, you wouldn't increase um, for property taxes. Charges for services, we are very close to what actual was, so I saw no need for revision there. We are in the process of doing our tax rate setting, and so um, our assessor has worked hard to get our new growth number certified by DOR. When we make the budget, we always budget about 500000 for our new growth, and then we adjust it at November town meeting based on what we know to be the amount that's going to be certified by DOR. And so we, at November town meeting, will be increasing that line item by just under 342000 to match with what the assessor has calculated as the actual new growth. As I said before, the investment income, I hesitated to do anything with it because I believe that overage is largely to do with capital money that's no longer there. <laughs> so I wouldn't change anything on fiscal 18. As a result of these changes, um, the fiscal 19 budget will go up by about 450000 Um, thanks, Sharon. Um, everyone that came in the room should have received a small packet. It's two pages, both sides, so it's four pages. I'm going to mostly talk off that for the first few minutes. Um, I'll leave some visuals up uh, for the audience at home. Um, if you turn to what is the third page on that small handout, if anyone didn't get it, I think they're right on the chair or the table outside. I'll, I'll wait a, mo a moment. There should have been a whole bunch over there. Yeah, I don't. John. I need to. Again, if you flip to what is the third page of four pages, at the top it says Town of Reading Revenues Dash Details. I'm going to start with some just some quick comments um, about FY19 primarily, but I. I do first want to start with that new growth number that Sharon just mentioned, the 841,000 that's shaded. Um, you know, that's the start, if you will, of our economic development. And it begs the question, why don't we project future years higher? Because clearly we have activity. Um, the reason that I don't feel comfortable doing that is while we have a lot of projects that have gone far through a lot of processes, none are permitted. So until a project's permitted, you don't know what might happen. So I, I'm comfortable with the 500,000. You can see beyond FY19, we have boost started to boost uh, new growth numbers a little bit more. And uh, that's an area that is recurring tax revenues. That's really a, a very strong thing. There's not much the town can do outside of an override to the tax situation. This is one of them. Um, Sorry, Bob, I'm sharing a touch point, but can you explain? So why was the, why did we get the big boost this past year? Boost in what? The, new, the growth. new growth. It's, there's no one answer. There's a variety of answers. Some of it is, is tag end of projects. Pulte Homes is probably the single biggest one. Um, they're putting in their 55 and over right now. Um, 
I'm trying to think if there, there was no other and one is that big project. The end of Pulte Homes project. Uh, in terms yes. Of new growth. And Johnson Wood still has a little bit more, and then all the other large projects that you've heard about have not started and have not started to hit our numbers yet. But you still don't think we'll see new growth like that again. None of them have pulled the permit, <coughs> so you just can't know. Um, if you look at uh, the next set, other local revenues, Sharon described that pretty well. Uh, we may have some room to increase motor vehicle excise uh, for, the, for the next few years, but car sales are notoriously unreliable. Um, they go up or down 300,000. Well, they don't usually go down that much. They go up 300,000 one year, and then they're flat for two years, so you just can't tell. Uh, the third point I want to make on this page is uh, intergovernmental revenue state aid. Um, FinCom knows this, but just as a reminder to everyone else, we assume a 2.5% growth. It hasn't happened for a long time. If our legislators are listening, this would be a nice time. Um, FinCom has a, uh, I guess I'll call it an informal policy to uh, supplement any shortfall from 2.5% with additional free cash used to balance the budget. <coughs> um, on the next page, this gets into the cost side of the budget, specifically the accommodated cost side. You know, there is a question I have, um, I have requested that we increase the OPEB contribution. That will be a discussion with FinCom just by $25,000. Um, as FinCom knows, it's now on the balance sheet, so it's, it's an important uh, item to, to fees as quickly as possible. The next thing I want to discuss is health insurance. Um, in a very chaotic market, um, I actually have some good news, although it's not going to help us much in the next year. Um, we just had a couple of meetings with the PEC, which I'll describe more fully in a, in a minute. They're all the unions. Um, and with Maya, our health insurance uh, agent. Um, Reading's health experience, the actual claims, are at an all-time low. We're, we're very healthy. There's no stress in this job at all, um, which is great news. So the 7.5, again, FinCom has a, a recent policy to budget 7.5% for health insurance. Um, it is almost for sure going to be that national and local health insurance will go up 12 to 15%. But we are told that we should be one of the lowest Maya rates because of our experience and that 7.5 is not unreasonable for Reading to budget. It's wildly variable and unknown, but at least that's as good a news as I can deliver on, on the next year budget. And uh, next I want to personally thank, um, we have uh, 16 unions and we have a retiree, two re retiree representatives. Uh, five school unions are 65%. Eight town unions are 18 percent, three light department unions are 7 percent, and the retirees represent 10 percent of what's called the PEC. Um, I negotiate with them over health insurance terms. I, uh, I'm going to call out all of them by name because they did a phenomenal job in the last month. Um, we have a group, a small group of 20 to 25 retirees that were not on medics. And there is a, I'll say loophole, although legally it's probably not, there is a way to get them on MedEx. The town has to pick up a portion of MedEx A, uh, Part A. Um, it's not well known at all, but our employees, retirees, and insurance carrier all found a way to do this within one week. We discovered a one-week deadline. Um, they reached out to all retirees, including down in Florida, had a conversation with them, and agreed. So I want to specifically thank our Arthur Vars and Ken Campbell, re representing the retirees, Bob Mooney, Reading Teachers and Nurse Association under Mass Teachers, Diane Finnegan, Reading Administrative Secretaries under Mass Teachers, uh, Roberta, what's Mrs. G's re real, real name? <laughs> Guacciarelli. Guacciarelli. Uh, Guacciarella. Everyone calls her Mrs. G. Um, Reading Power Educators, also Mass Teachers. Um, the Reading Cafeteria employees has asked me they hadn't shown up. The school custodial asked me, uh, Bob Dean. The Reading Facilities Maintenance Workers and Town Custodians. Uh, Public Works, Peter Isabel, Supervisors Union. Public Works asked me, Mike Pontone. Uh, engineers, Chris Cole. The Firefighters, Bob Beck. Police Supervisor Association, Richard Body. Patrolman's Association, Derek Holmes. 
uh, Public Safety <coughs> Dispatchers, Ryan Mahoney, and then three unions for RMLD, uh, Jack Flaherty and Joel Thornton for the line meter station, uh, Nick DeLeva, the uh, Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and Evelyn Holt, the Clerical Technical Unit. Um, the reason I chose to read their names is they're going to save us hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future. Um, the 20 or 25 employees that are all retired will now have their, if you will, uh, insurance uh, coverage costs picked up by Medex starting next July 1st, forever. Um, so we won't see anything for this year. We probably wouldn't see much for next year. But over a 5, 10, 20 year horizon, this will be a significant savings. And no one is worse off. The retirees are fine. Um, they have to do extra work. All of them have to go get a Social Security card and, and discuss things with the federal government. So you can imagine how much fun that will be. Um, and I, I, I mentioned this, and I spend a little extra time on it, just to make sure you understand that our retirees and employees are partners in health insurance. It's a national issue. It's a difficult issue. Um, we're not adversaries. We're partners that happen to have a split on health insurance. Nonetheless, 7.5% will strain the budget, no matter what we do. <clears throat> I ha I'll have a question for FinCom during the budget process. Um, the last few years, I think three years, you have agreed to a temporary shift of some capital into the operating budget. I've um, reduced that slightly for illustrative purposes. You can see that as uh, the line under accommodated cost benefits, temp ship to operating, you know, almost 200,000. Um, at that point, I do want to jump to capital and describe some issues with the capital plan. At November town meeting and later this evening, um, I will ask FinCom to uh, vote on three capital uh, plan changes for this current year. 480,000 is a wood end skylight replacements. I know the school committee has discussed that. 150,000 is firefighter EMS simulation training equipment. Um, I included in your pack out tonight a very long uh, explanation of that that you <coughs> saw last March, just as a reminder. That was further out in the capital plan and we need to move it up. And uh, one of the reasons we can afford to do that is the fire department under Greg Burns uh, got a significant grant. We had $190,000 budgeted for fire EMS breathing apparatus. We only need to spend $25,000. The rest is grant funded. So congratulations to the fire department for saving $165,000. And, and again, at November town meeting, as FinCom will see later tonight, we will not need to use any free cash to pay for this additional capital of $465,000, with new growth being the largest reason. Um, last year, we, we thought we did a reasonably good job with the override of discussing long-term things. We're going to be a little louder about those this year. As you know, we have a lot of activity in the downtown. It's not all visible yet. It's in the planning stages. I can think of three, four projects right off the bat. Uh, they're in various states of approval and, and, and planning. Um, after a long discussion with staff, we used to really take one project at a time and determine what's the impact of this project on our water, <coughs> sewer, storm water, and possibly parking and above ground things. And it was clearly the time for the town of Reading to step back and study the downtown holistically. So I have proposed in FY19, 400,000, 100,000 each from the three enterprise funds and the general fund uh, to conduct a study of what do we need to do. I'm, I'm more concerned, honestly, with water, sewer, and storm water. But at the same time, we may as well really tackle the issue of parking and any above ground improvements necessary. And then just totally as a placeholder, uh, for purposes of planning in FY20, I've put in a million dollars of debt for each of those. We have no idea what it might be. I like to think it'll be less. And again, the reason this downtown, downtown infrastructure is important is this, how you, this is how you generate new growth, um, permanent tax revenues. The next issue, which has been discussed previously without any financial numbers, and there's been one executive session with the elected boards this fall, is a $3.8 million building security uh, project. Um, I, I believe I'll put 400000 into the FY19 budget as the highest priority capital, and then I'll defer a discussion for a few minutes on the next two pieces, but there's $2 million that is highly desired, and then there's a million or million four that I'd have to say is optional, would be nice to be able to do. Um, and just to warn everyone on FinCom and, and on town meeting, 
if you like details, you'll be very frustrated. We can't give you very many. Um, the documents were not circulated to any elected officials. Um, John and myself and a very small group have them. They are very private under Homeland Security directives, and each page says that. Um, so at some point, that's going to have to just be a trust us. We'll describe as much as we can and as much as is safe. Uh, but in this case, transparency will not be fully achieved by any means. Over the last six months or so, we've looked down at the high school at some of the planned athletic improvements and refined some numbers, and some of them have really grown quite a bit. Sometimes things were planned as a repair and they really need to be a replace. So there's over $6 million of work that needs to be done down at the high school. Um, at Artificial Turf One is the high school stadium. The track around the stadium combined 2.75 million. Artificial Turf Two, which is the second turf field behind the stadium, over 2 million. And a new issue that has just come up in the last year or so, or six months or so, is over a million dollars to do the field house floor to replace that and bleachers would be optional, but I believe the bleachers are 1950s, if I, if I recall correctly. Um, so that is a significant hit on the capital plan. Um, we've discussed um, in small groups with a chair, vice chair meeting, and certainly with staff, um, there is no way to put all this capital into the capital plan and make it work. As, as part of an override and a longer term financial discussion, I am going to propose uh, excluded debt in two or three years to accomplish these three things. Two million dollars of the building security, six million of high school uh, athletic improvements, and we've already had two and a half million or so in the, in the regular capital plan for Birch Meadow Field improvements, and I suggest we pull that out. We have other capital that's just critical. Um, the 10-year capital plan cannot accommodate this 10 million. It's possible in five to seven years we could start accommodating some of it. Um, from my discussion with the uh, you know, recreation staff and the athletic director at the high school, seven years is too long to wait from a safety standpoint. So this will be a, a point of discussion over the winter. Whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, we'll have to discuss it. Um, it's all a matter of priorities. But just to be totally transparent with the community, um, there has been informal discussion about an override it is my personal belief that if there is an override, it will be smaller. This is one of the reasons it could be smaller, is there would be a one-time capital request that goes with it. There's still some unknown capital issues out there. Sometime in the next month or two, the schools hope to get an update from the Mass uh, School Building Authority on Killam. Right now, Killam is not on their list to be reimbursable. I don't think there's any way to know what the odds are, whether it will be or won't be. But if it is on the list to be reimbursable, we'll have to pick it up off the table and discuss it and discuss a time frame. Uh, community center has been discussed. Um, for those of you that uh, tuned into the selectmen's meeting a couple months ago, uh, Elder Human Services came in and gave a, a nice presentation, uh, but really the only negative was the facility they're in. It's too small. It, and it's aging, and seniors don't like to go up and down the fire poles the way the police uh, firefighters used to there. <laughs> Although one did say she would like to try. Um, we have also informally discussed the Oakland Road land as being a possible solution. And, I, and I, when I say this, it's just totally right off the top of my head. Um, we have talked to two private vendors to uh, possibly combine our efforts into a site that way. Um, both were interested. One of them is no longer interested. The other one's still very interested. So that's just another topic. Um, I can't give you an amount, I can't give you a time frame, but I can tell you that the senior center as we know it now will not support the aging population we project in this town if that's what we want to do. Um, you've, you've heard recently about a joint venture with Wakefield. Um, a lot of details still to be worked out. It's listed in the capital plan as creative options. Um, somewhere down in five or six or seven years, there is actually dollar figures associated with it just for planning purposes. We will end up sharing the costs of a garage with the three enterprise funds and with the general fund. Um, Sharon and I have worked on a formula to do that fairly. Um, to be very clear, that is going to be a cost, a significant cost, but I can't give you much details just because I don't know. Um, the idea for that, as in the above ground and below ground downtown work, is that this is meant to seed economic development. 
The timing certainly won't be perfect, but the idea is tax revenues will come in at some point that should be able to take care of the debt service for most of the term of the debt, at least. So as, as we discussed, um, all other things going on in this town, we could not think of any other single issue that would be an excluded <coughs> debt uh, item. So again, you have that recreation athletic one I mentioned, if you will, plus building security. Um, and that's, that's debatable. You have Killam, which we know we can't do inside the levy. And then you have a community center, which also could be debated. Um, I don't believe the DPW garage will need to be done as excluded debt. Again, we'll have to just be creative inside the levy. But I just wanted to make sure as early as possible in the budget cycle the town was as transparent as it could be that there are other things going on other than an operational override. It's, it's a question of priorities and which comes first and, and what's most important. So I guess we'll no. resume. Yes. Um, <laughs> you have some questions? Paul, Paula has a couple questions on uh, the presentation that we just saw. Or Bob, I wonder, so I, there were just some, and some of the stuff you talked upon, to, oh, sorry. I'm just going to ask a quick question. No, no, this, this is our budget for this year. So again, um, Bob, some of the stuff you touched upon, but I was still a little unclear on. If we look at page one um, at the top, and you highlight it in blue in the colored one back out in 21. So what's the uptick in the property taxes, you know, the 4.9 percent? Oh, um, that's a good point. Um, on the page that says, I think it's the last page, Oh, I was thinking it was summary. the first. I was tabled mine wrong order. Um, yeah. I, I spoke about the $10 million of debt exclusion. Uh, for planning purposes in FY21, oh, I you might have. that's where it's put down. So you see a, a large increase in property taxes. So that's excluded. And a large jump in accommodated costs. Because I saw it specifically, in the details. Yeah, debt. So that's where that $10 million got starts it. as debt. So you Thank made you. an assumption. I did. That, okay, got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. And if we like stick with that page, the second column, so FY19, the capital of 27.3, what's behind that? I'm not going to help. Um, Actually, maybe, do you have this in the slide? I, I have a capital <laughs> plan. Do you want me to show you? I mean, it's, yeah. there's a well, decrease just in was, debt service, oh. so the combination is still, it's your 5% rule minus 175,000. So there's an increase in capital, but there's a decrease in debt. And it, and it ends that's up being, what we, that's what ends up being somewhere bit. around 4.8 or 4.85 percent. Well, I'm looking at 27.3 percent. No, I'm saying the total as a percent of revenues oh. is your 5 percent policy, a little bit less, just like it was last year, only a little bit less. Okay. Yeah. Um, right, and the only comment about um, taking a little bit less on the capital than what we generally talked about. I agree, and without knowing the details, I know we're woefully weak in some of the security that we probably need across town just because that's what society is now, that you need a lot more kind of security infrastructure in place. So I wonder if we have a greater need than, I think you said, 400,000 that you'd like to put in uh, next year's plan, whether we see we should increase that and not be decreasing our capital when we have that security need. Yeah, that's absolutely a fair question, um, just in case you couldn't hear. Um, this number here, for the last three years, FinCom has spent less on the combination of debt and capital than their 5% policy would otherwise stipulate. Uh, until this um, you know, recent change, honestly, in a couple of items, the capital plan was really very healthy and very good shape, short-term and long-term. So that adjustment for the operating budget seems sensible. Um, since we haven't discussed this with FinCom yet, I just lowered the number. So instead of pushing 300000 into the operating budget, um, 
I pushed 175 for no reason other than the capital plan happened to balance and that was really what was left. It's absolutely a, an argument as to whether you want to push any money into the operating budget or we'll push more than 175. There's no, there's no answer. It's priorities. I will say that I'm much less interested in um, shifting a lot of money away from capital as I would have been a year ago just for the reasons I just mentioned. And I, I would agree with you that security would be at the top of the list. I don't think um, John and Joe and I have sat down and really identified exactly what 400,000 gets you versus 500,000. We probably should do that, but certainly before the budgets get discussed in detail. Bob. So I was wondering if it made if it might make sense to adjust some of our assumptions uh, in a way that would not change the overall budget picture, but would be more in keeping with recent years our 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 recent years um, experience. So specifically with respect to our assumptions around state aid and health care costs, because our our state aid always come, or not always, but in recent years has come in um, under what we budget and our health care costs also end up being less than what we budget for. And if we should adjust those accordingly, not in a way that would change the overall revenue and budgeting picture, but in a way that just is more in keeping with the reality of what we've seen the past few years. Again, that's really a FinCom decision as far as I'm concerned. I don't object really to any discussion you have. Um, I would say that I, I would feel more strongly in agreement with you that state aid at two and a half is very optimistic based on all sorts of reality. Health insurance, I don't know. I really don't. Um, we had a discussion over a year ago to set it at 8 percent and just go forward at 8 percent and any, any overage would be free cash and then through the budget process last year you asked me to reduce it to seven and a half. Um, I'm a little more comfortable this year that the seven and a half might not be horrible but if everyone else gets 15 we won't get seven and a half. You know we might get 10. So I don't have any sense of when we'll know that. Um, this year where FinCom is meeting a month sooner you're going to have to vote a budget when we don't know that answer for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. Usually we know in the third or fourth week of February. We, we know in the last week of January what the range is on the pool we're in, so we know the high and the low, so we know worst case. I assume we'll have the same thing in the end of January this year. It, could, it may or may not be in time for the financial form. Um, and then we usually get numbers second, third, or fourth week in February, and that's when FinCom is meeting. So I think it's going to be very uncertain this year. So it's important for you guys to be comfortable with whatever assumption we make, because that's probably the budget you're going to have to vote. Then can we also go back to, again, just for clarification, I'm on that same page. I think that's what Chuck was asking about. So that I see the school operating, but I'm still trying to understand the adjustments, 300 and then minus 100. Just what those are. I think she's pointing to this. Right yeah. there. Yeah, um, right in the middle. In the, in the current year's budget, I'm not going to remember all the details. Um, Gail needed $10 for something. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I offered um, you the $10. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do remember $10. Yeah, I, I knew you'd remember that. Um, most, most or all of this I really don't remember was related to moving special ed special out of district tuition. cost to in district. So it was to help the school budget, if you will, by since we're uh, reducing a shared cost, uh, special ed out of district, it seemed quite reasonable that the schools increase that amount. And then this year, um, this is the 100000 that, uh, you know, I guess FinCom voted to support the foreign language program just in case for one year. Oh, so the 300000 That already is, happened. Right, but it's really a shift between accommodated and mm -hmm. operating. It, it, if I you, get it. Okay, so it's not... The reason the school budget you know, was higher than the town budget last year is for that reason. And next year, I can't remember. I guess it's reversed in the uh, operating yeah. budgets. Again, for the but reason of... Again, that's just coming out of accommodated. It's coming right off the top of revenue. So before yeah. we divided up the pie, we said to the schools, here's $300,010. And now we'll divide up the rest. <laughs> I don't remember why the $10. But if we saw the total school budget... Right. 
we wouldn't see that 300 because it's, it's the way you're slicing. You wouldn't see it anywhere as different other than it yeah. happened to help yeah, fund in district special ed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? So yeah, the RMLD payment. Uh -oh. So this is. <laughs> There's Dan. Um, if you recall, there was an instructional motion last yeah. April to look into this. Uh, Dan Ensminger and I have had one meeting with um, RMLD that includes, um, I think it was two of the towns. Um, we didn't discuss specifics when when pushed. <clears throat> Um, one of the commissioners asked me, well, what are you really looking for? I said 10%. He said, I knew you were going to say that. So I wanted a 10% increase every year, which is obviously not going to happen. Um, I think it's a reasonable idea for our planning purposes, just a budget like we do for state aid, 2.5%. It's CPI based. Um, I have not looked this month, uh, last year, and for the last several years, it has not reached as high as 2.5% on the CPI, and one year was negative. So that's an ongoing discussion. I know Dan will have an update at town meeting under Article 2. I believe we have one more meeting scheduled with RMLD before that time. And other so than that, we're, we'll we're see. just assuming no progress there, really. Um, and I didn't we always would have assumed a number around 2% or 2.5, yeah. so it's not really a big change. But you know, we are having that discussion just to close that loop. But maybe taking a step up, changing the baseline. Um, and I didn't remember, so it was just 1% last year? Yeah, it's, it's been below 2% for the last several years. I think it, at one point we were talking about having a floor on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 10% didn't seem to be the solution, so. 10% floor, no. <laughs> um, sorry, another clarification. When we were talking about the, the capital, um, the possible debt exclusion that would be requested, and you broke it out between high school athletic improvements, the security in Birch Meadow. Of that 10.6, what did we already have in the capital plan of that 10.6? Let me, let me get back to that. Um, it's right here somewhere. At the end. It's around 4 million, I think, 4 or 5. So there was 1.65 plus 2.5. So a little over 4 million was already in the capital plan. So, if you will, there's six million of new or additional costs. And that's so. And, and, but to be fair, the building security was in there with with an unknown. We, I think it just said one million plus. We had no idea what they'd right. come back with. And any out year stuff, a lot of times you don't know exactly. Right. So the assumptions you made in the future years was the net. You know. Um, I I think I probably would have assumed, uh, ten million of debt for ten years, in the for planning purposes. But then you offset with the four million that was already in there. Uh, yes, that got removed from the capital yeah. plan. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay, got it. Bob, while you're while you're up there, can you just flip back to the the previous slide on free cash? God, we're talking about this. I this one. Ah, oh, sorry. The next one. Uh, I just needed, yep. needed to remember a number. Yeah, it fin it finally turned around for the first time. I thought it was going to happen four years ago. It finally What's stopped that? growing. Yeah. <laughs> we, as Sharon showed you, we kept spending more and more free cash. And then last year really spent a lot. And it finally said, okay, that's enough. I can't grow. <laughs> but FinCom rightly made fun of me for every year. It's saying it can't keep growing, and it did. But it didn't this year. But we still regenerated a lot. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. But just not four and a half million, you know, three million. We, there were a lot of one time spends. You know, the, the problem in this is any given year, there's a chunk of one time things. So do you just say, well, there's going to be a chunk of one-time things. I don't know what their name is. Let's put it in 500000 a million dollars. I don't know. You know, I think 
FinCom used to be comfortable with zero free cash for many, many years. It, it's like that's not a proper way to budget is to use free cash unless you're spending on one-time expenses. Um, and believe me, that was with much more conservative uh, revenue uh, assumptions than we have now. Um, now, we're a little more generous in the revenue as, as best as you know, Sharon feels comfortable with. But look, you know, we've, we've hit every year or at least a million over in revenues. So we have uh, library uh, capital funding for this project and we earn interest on it, just like we did for the high school many years ago. You can't budget for that. You know, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars in the high school's case, it was a lot more than that, it was seven or eight hundred thousand. You can't put that in the budget because you're just gonna spend it down and that interest income is gonna go away. Um, so some of this makes sense that, that it can't be budgeted even if you know it's there. Um, and then some of it, it just varies every year. Again, excise taxes, one year we were too high. I think eight or nine years we've been too low. You can't, you can just make up a number and just go high. Let's, let's increase by 300,000. You know, it's probably not a terrible thing except for the year where you're wrong. Can we have a revenue deficit one year total? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really bad thing. So that's the thing you want to be careful with. Yeah, Vanessa? Um, I feel like you touched on this, but could you clarify under projected fiscal year 19 under accommodated costs capital, the jump from 18 to 19, from 2.2 to 2.8? Again, that's under projected fiscal year 19 under accommodated costs. Yep. Capital. Um, let me go to another spreadsheet. Um, here's the capital plan that I don't think I've shared with you yet. Um, the current year is currently 2.2 million. Then we're going to ask for the wood end skylight and the EMS equipment and so forth. So let's go up to 2.7. Here's the 2.8 you see. Um, in round numbers, you're supposed to spend two and a half million in the current year and three million next year on capital because we have a lot less debt next year. So, you know, 5% debt and capital, it frees up more money for capital. So the debt's gone down, the capital goes up. Plus then there's the variability of how much do you want to divert, if you will, to the operating budgets, if any. You can see on this capital plan, I mentioned for 10 years, you know, one, two, three, four, five, that's pretty much balanced for six or seven years, knowing that it's never going to be this perfect. Um, it's a three and a half million dollar surplus over 10 years. That's good, but, you know, capital seven, eight, ten years from now, you don't know yet, so it's not there, so it's not surprising. Um, this used to be a much healthier surplus um, just a year ago a year and a half ago, uh, which is why I felt that we had to pull that stuff out. Because otherwise, if you try to keep those 10 million in this capital plan, you have to make choices between equipment like, you know, police, fire, uh, DPW trucks, facilities capital, and those items. And you can't do it all. So I'm not saying this is done. I'm just suggesting this seemed like a reasonable thing to discuss. Yeah, if you, if you look right above that, here's the th more or less $3 million of surplus, either revenues or less expenses. So you're right. 
We're not really using four and a half million, we're using one and a half million. But when the public looks at that, they think we're using four point uh, four nine. Yeah. Oops. Well, it's simple enough. We could just add a line here and show it's down, you know, seven hundred thousand or whatever net. Mm -hmm. That's that's what the point you're making, which I agree with. Right, because it's sometimes it's it seems like we're not doing the right um, financial responsibility by using free cash to balance our budget. And I always try and come up with the analogy. And the closest I can come is, gee, I remember when I was going off to college, my, you know, I had my checking account and you know, thinking I had enough money. And my father said, you know what? I'll help you and I'll take out a line of credit. I don't really expect you to touch it, but here's this line of credit that really at the, and it, you know, you might have to touch throughout the year, but in the net, in the long run, you don't really touch it, which is how I mm. look at us using free cash to balance the budget because we continually regenerate significantly over what we think we're going to need. So it balances the budget and makes us comfortable that we're going to get through the year. There's never any guarantees, but it's just a buffer to allow us to not constrain the operating budget in such a way that we're so constrained and yet then at the end of the year we are appropriately conservative both on the revenue and expense side that then money ends up flowing back. So I just want to make it so clear that when we usually, when we, for the last, I don't know, seven years when we've used free cash to balance the budget, we never really require that in the end. Correct. So I just, I think it's a weird concept for people and I want people to understand not only do we not require it, we end up having additional money that flows in. And that's why we're comfortable doing it. You know, as opposed to finance, the optics of this could be you just assume another million dollars of revenue. Now, she's going to have a problem with that, right. but that's okay. But that's basically what it is. Uh, but that's basically what it is. Yeah. So, you know, you yeah. figure out a way to add another million to all those lines of revenue. That's mm -hmm. really what it is. Um, we can't know um, at any given time that we won't spend money that's been budgeted. And FinCom will remember, but those of you that weren't at the last meeting won't, that a big chunk of the town's turn back was public safety uh, overtime that we just weren't sure if we needed at the end of the year. So FinCom had a thorough discussion about that uh, within the last month. And they saw that we have a habit of asking for reserve fund transfers at town meeting and sometimes for FinCom. And in only one of the last few years have we actually needed it. Uh, and that was last year. It's a similar discussion in a way, which is we tend to ask for more money to be safe in case we need to use it. But we can't ask for money as part of the operating budget and not intend to spend it. At least that doesn't seem sensible to me. And, and likewise, I suppose it's possible that, that John and I and the school committee and the selector could figure out a way to budget lower expenses, even though the run rate right now is what it, it's, you know, a higher number. And we'll say, well, there's bound to be turnover. So anytime there's turnover, there's a vacant position for some amount of time, almost always. Maybe it'll work out. But that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. And she wouldn't like that. Right, and the other point with use of free cash, because sometimes you do see that number and it seems high, it's often at Springtown meeting, we know Correct. we're in good shape and we very consciously make a decision to move capital in to say, you know what, we can afford to buy this capital item now, let's use free cash to do that. Right. It's a very conscious decision to continue to spend that money in the spring. Plus and every year for optional. at least the last few years, um, town meeting and you have agreed to move money into OPEP. It's budgeted for OPEB, but it's also meant to be a health insurance premium reserve if, if we need it. And since we didn't need it, off it goes. Um, you know, snow and ice is the other biggest expense wild card. Um, we're, we're probably not going to ever budget too high, although it did happen once in the last 10 years. We could be off by seven or 800000 easily. That's the reason you need a certain amount of free cash that's not just the rainy day. You know, it's for things that is pre pretty much going to happen once every three or four years. So I agree that the optics and the terminology maybe needs a little polish, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's a sound bite kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and all your suggestions are most welcome uh, on that score. Uh, just like with any situation, as you guys looked at, at fire, 
uh, wages at, and, and then did not look at fire, or I'm sorry, fire overtime and not at the line items of wages, you got a different picture. You only looked at overtime, you said, cripes, you guys don't know what you're doing. You're off by hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. Only looking at overtime, that's right. The reason that we were off is because there were vacant positions and savings and salary. So, you know, it's always dangerous to put numbers out for any group of people that can be misinterpreted. And a single line like that, free cash, I agree, can be misinterpreted. So yeah. for, the, for the security kind of um, project that we're talking about, is there monies that you feel we, additional monies based on what you show tonight um, that would be prudent to spend <coughs> sooner? Because I'd feel comfortable increasing the capital back to what where we like it and basically taking that additional money out of free cash to balance it. Yeah, I mean, I think the number was about 2.4 million of what we considered to be, I think we called it basic um, essential capital to be spent over some period of time. Um, and then and another 2 million or so that was optional. Not, not that it wasn't important, but it's not as important as the first group. Um, it's definitely going to be a judgment call as to look, looking at that first 2.4 million and saying what's the most important 400,000 or 800,000 or whatever exactly. the number is. Because if it's that's going to be a discussion. I, think I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. And again, that's not a discussion we can really have with many people. Mm -hmm. Because I feel comfortable taking additional from free cash. And, to and likewise, that. during the year, um, as not as opposed to the operating budget, we can do that at town meetings. Oh, look, we're having a good year in snow and ice. Let's put a couple hundred thousand more into security. You know, I, I do know enough about the issues in security that they're not completely flexible, but there's a lot of menu items that you can choose uh, as you have funds. It's not all or none. We have to do this million and then that million. Linda? Um, does the town meeting number work? Um, I was really surprised at the answer I'm going to tell you is I would have said FinCom changed it recently, recently from 5% to 7%. I would have said 7% is a really good number. We surveyed our peer communities and almost all of them are at 10% or more. It was like, how, how can that possibly be? But that's what people do um, for whatever reason. You know, some of the reason is favorable things like more revenues, less expensive. But as we went through in the current year, if you use a high amount of free cash in an operating budget and then you can't use it in the second year or some future year, it's a disaster. So the best way to really work off a large free, cap, uh, free cash balance to get it down to 7%, for instance, is go out and spend $3 million on one thing, on a piece of something, as opposed to putting it in the operating budget for year after year. I mean, the amount that we should have, that we should always have in there, is there a certain amount, like should it be 10 million, 12 million? Well, if it's 10 percent, which is what our peers generally do, it's 9 million. So we have an extra million and change. Okay. So we're doing okay. Yeah. I would have said we were doing really well, but not compared to our peers. We're just doing okay. Right, and you never get a really straight answer, right? From as the to, rating agency will never rating tell agencies, you. Oh, what is the perfect number? There's no. never a straight answer because there's so many factors involved. Yeah, it's an art. Because we're always asking that. <laughs> uh, what's, this, what's the decline in the chart, the bar chart, the year over year decline in free cash? Is that the same 4.49 draw? Is that here? Um, as Sharon described, the first one is, is real, assuming that her numbers are generally right for uh, this year. And then um, she assumed a certain amount of regeneration in the future. Let's say we use a million one, and let's say five or six hundred thousand is regenerated. So these last two years are just guesses. 
Um, and that's traditionally what we've done, but you've seen the real regeneration is, is $3 million or $2 million. It's more uh, than if you only use 1.1 and don't use any more. But since that the drop between the peak and the one to the right is mm -hmm. almost the same drop as the others to the right, it must also be if you go back to your table now. I th and I think that's why Sharon did it with that estimate. Right. If the next two years are like last year, and we use a certain amount of free cash and we regenerate and so on and so forth, let's just take a guess and let's just knock it down by the similar amount. Right, so all things considered, your model effectively another four and a half free cash. Yeah. Well, do you mind putting the ch chart back up that shows the stabilization versus free cash? And, um, nothing funds or continues going to that general stabilization. My recollection is many years ago, um, some one-time payment was put in there. I think it might have been from the last override, the override. but I, I don't remember if it was what it was, was it roads or just we needed to have a savings account. Yeah. And I know FinCom has discussed for a few years, um, should, should you knock down the amount of free cash and put it in a stabilization yeah, fund? And I will to. tell you, most communities do that. I feel pretty strong, and I think we should really look at this, is putting 5% in the stabilization because that's, we've, our policy when we increased free cash to be 7%, we said if it ever gets below 5%, that's dire. That's going to take some real action on our part to address that. So to me, I feel like that should be kept separate. And I'd like to see us put 5% yeah. in that general stabilization because that's in a different category mentally to me. And it, that takes two thirds to move money right. out of there, right? So it yep. takes town meeting takes two thirds to move it out of there. I like the idea of putting that really long term, you know, savings separately in that general stabilization. Do you see any negative to doing that? Um, the rating agencies thirds. would like that for the reason you just said. It's harder to get out. Um, most of our peer communities have much better stabilization <laughs> funds than us, and the most common one is called capital stabilization. I don't exactly know why. And I don't have any opinion what kind of stabilization fund you should have, but if it's FinCom's intention, I don't remember. Did you vote a minimum of five or a minimum of four? I, I can't remember exactly. I five. 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 Yeah. five. Yeah. I think when it hits five, then you need to study it or something. Yeah. So that, yeah. um, I think it's quite reasonable to put some study. amount in the stabilization yeah. fund that represents, we always have that, let's not talk about it. That's for the something we couldn't have foreseen. Exactly. And, and it does look like eight and a half million is, is free cash. You know, oh, let's go spend it. So for us to do something like that, is that an article at town meeting? Yeah, that's meeting? an article, I guess, at this point for April town meeting. Um, I would like to I'm see I'm pretty sure that has to be a separate article to move money into a stabilization fund uh, by a two-thirds mm -hmm. vote. And that would have to be April at this point. Yeah, and we also, well, free cash isn't certified, so we shouldn't do it now anyways. Uh -huh. yeah, right. But as a committee, I'd like to see us do that for you. Which bottom, the, how much is in additional that's not included in the, the aster, the, the bottom? Which additional the, what? It says total excludes funds designated. For oh, yeah, well, uh, that's like some of your revolving funds. Or some, we have the recreation or, yeah, recreational revolving fund. We have a 40R fund. I don't honestly know if there's a balance in it now. Is there a couple hundred thousand? Smart home stabilization has got 503 in it. Okay. So there's, it's, it's things that are Earmark for specific for purposes. There's a limited amount of things you can do with the funds. So a revolving fund is considered a sta stabilization? No, but it just it, it, what it means to say is this is the only general stabilization fund that can be used for any purpose. <coughs> All other monies have some use designated for it, whether it's school or town. Thank you. The uh, budget proposed for fiscal year 19, is that assume that there will be an override success? No. It does not? Correct. So there is no need to override if you the budget. Is that, is that what you're saying? That would be correct. Okay, so what's the problem with the override? Why have to, why have to dig into the problem? That's a, that's a community discussion as to whether two and a quarter percent is adequate. Because one of the reasons that bothers me about the override is that we're not being transparent telling the public exactly what they're going to override. We have a three and a half, what, three or four percent increase in salary and uh, property evaluation last year. That's not a factor. Yeah, that's not a factor, but it, it raises taxes. No, it does not. 
Prop two and a half is the only prop two and a half is the only way the taxes go up net. If the property valuations don't go up and the tax rate doesn't change, doesn't the income go up? If the property tax values go higher than two and a half percent, the property tax rate comes down so that the combination is two and a half percent. Thank you for that for your clarification. But the other two things on the budget right now that we're paying for are the debt exclusion for the high school, I believe, and with debt exclusion for this building, but I don't even know where those are now, 19, 20, 25? I'll show you. Yeah, that's far. about right. Okay, so you're going to put two and a half percent. What you're proposing is if you have an override, is to put two and a half percent on top of both of those uh, impacts on, on our tax rate. And that, it, we're not being clear to the public when we tell them about these two overrides, these two uh, debt exclusions. I just laid it out for you. I, I laid it out at the macro level. I don't see that in public forums. We have to be up front to tell people this is what you're facing. I agree. All right, we agree too. And so the, the more you can get people here at meetings like this, it's, it's always a real challenge trying to get the public word out. Let me, let me explain the problem that perhaps some people in this room do not face. The elderly in this community, and I'm one of them obviously, we have been living under essentially zero increase since 2009. There are people in this room who are working, have two salaries coming in, they're, really, they're probably getting two and a half percent increases or something like that in the public interest, in the private industry. So these overrides don't seem to impact them as much. But people on fixed income, those, these increases on the tax rate are not going to be easily borne. Okay? In fact, one of the one of the town meeting members who always gets up and speaks, I'm not going to mention his name, has moved out of Reading. And he's an elderly person, he and his wife, because the taxes probably drove them up. And we have to start opening up that fact that these tax rates are hurting a large percentage of our population. It's all fine and dandy to say two and a half percent on this and we'll handle it. But people are living on a fixed income, they can't handle it. Thank you. I agree with everything you said and I would urge you to watch or attend the next selectman's meeting where the, um, the assessors, the board of assessors and the assessor will review the results of the first senior tax relief. Um, there'll be about 200,000 plus or minus moved from the elderly that qualified for tax breaks onto the rest of the taxpayers. So the selectmen have done, by law, the most they can do. We're only one of three communities in the state that have even done that. So I, I totally hear you. I know the board has heard you. And um, there was some discussion whether to link that with an override. The board said, no, people need to help regardless. So um, there will be about, I think it's 200, I don't remember exactly, um, you know, seniors affected by reduced taxes of anywhere from $500 to $1,500, depending on how the discussion goes. And how many qualify for that? About 200. About 200, yeah. how many? 25,000? No, not putting me that much. I think uh, 215 applied and 200 qualified. But there are strict rules on, that, on those applications, and it's both the income related. So there are state gu guidelines, right. yes. It's all income related. Uh, there is also an asset test. Yeah. I, I think it's, it bears repeating that, in fact, that the, uh, if the assessments go up, the tax rate does go down. And in fact, it has go down, gone down in several of the last few years. So I, I think that point hasn't been made clear yeah. in as many places as it could be. Yeah, we've asked the assessors not to uh, release that story the day after the override was announced <laughs> in the future. They do it every year. It, it normally gets no press. It looked bad. You know, the fact that everyone's assessed value went up is a good thing, and your taxes are going to go up as a community 2.5%. If your assessed value went up and you're going to sell someday, that's a good thing. Our uh, market values of houses are generally say five to ten percent maybe sometimes higher above assessed values so yeah higher value at home is not a bad thing back to the reserve slide if you would um, one of the things we mentioned was the fincom reserves <clears throat> one of the things we had mentioned previously was the the size of the fincom reserves mm -hmm. um, and i know it was uh, an issue this year because of the um, unexpected expenses that we had very late in the year and I wonder if um, maybe well, I guess it'd be a shift from free cash into FinCom reserves 
Sure. Um, but I think it might be a good good time to do that. Um, I, I agree, if only that it's been 150000 for more than 12 years. Yeah. I can't remember the last time it was less, and honestly, or more. I've budget's probably more. doubled in uh, 12 years. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a question of how do you fund it? You can fund it as well, part of the over as the operating budget, and maybe you can use extra free cash just for that, or you add to it during the year at a town meeting using free cash. It's the same thing; it makes no difference. We discussed this maybe two or three years ago, and FinCom decided, "No, let's not do that this year because it's going to be a tough year." But I think it's a good idea, and you saw at the end of last year a reason why. Yeah. Even if it ended up that police and fire didn't need the money, it's you know the after town meeting in April, and early May. You don't know what might happen to any one department. Um, that's the second time in the 12 years I've been here that the selectmen and the FinCom have had to have a joint meeting in order to move money between budget line items. Um, this was for public safety, the other time was for Board of Assessors. So that's a nice emergency clause to have. It's not very frequently used. Better to have a FinCom reserve fund that can handle that, in my opinion. George? Uh, let me ask a stupid question related to some of the other discussion. So if my assessed value before the reassessment was 500 k and my assessed value went up 100% to a million dollars, am I still limited to 2.5% of the 500 k It depends what everyone else's property did. If, if everyone's goes up 100%, every piece of property in town, and there's no new growth, then yes, you will be paying a 2.5% increase over last year's taxes. But if your house goes up more or less than all the rest of the property, then your number 25 will go differently, higher or lower. So, okay, so everyone else remained the same. My house went up to a million bucks, so I'm paying. Then you'd pay more. If, if everyone stayed the same and only you went up, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> um, secondly, you would definitely pay more taxes, and everyone else would pay a tiny bit less. Yeah, that's why I moved here, so my excess value would go up. <laughs> we can work on that. <laughs> and in that same example, your assessment goes double, then the tax rate will almost go in half. Mine's the two percent, you know. So it, yeah, if everyone the tax rate would did very significantly go down. Yeah. It's the product of the two. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Because I think some other people have been used by that. Right. The best example is um, you and your friend are found by a lion in the Sahara Desert. You put on faster sneakers, and your friend says you can't outrun the lion. You say I'm not trying to outrun the lion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, FinCom, are you ready to have a discussion on uh, use of free cash? Um, you want to have a, a motion or just uh, discussion first and then uh, a motion? Discussion. Okay. I, I would like to see some added uh, amount of the FinCom reserve fund. And uh, well, it seems to me that taking it out of uh, free cash, it's money that we wouldn't be spending unless we needed it. And it just gives us that flexibility so that we hopefully wouldn't have the problem that we had this year. Um, and to keep uh, free cash at 1.2 million, which is what it was last year, and just take that extra 100,000 into FinCom reserves, I think uh, would be helpful. No guarantees will be enough, but uh, there are years that we don't even spend it. So anybody? Uh, <coughs> Feel another number is appropriate? Yeah, I'm certainly comfortable, you know, at least using the, the 1.1 1 .1 as the placeholder or the 1.2 that we used last year. I mean, I, I keep going back to the regeneration chart, right? Now, I'm, I've been one that says it every year. I get it. Eventually, it's going to stop. But, you know, we've got to be realistic, too. We've seen, you know, clearly showed a five-year trend right there that the trend goes on for even more than that and if we're you know we're looking to come as close to maintaining these services as we can 
you know, we do still have some resources available. We need to be extremely conscious of what we dig into to free cash, but you know, we, we can't ignore the fact that we continue to regenerate. Uh, and you know, from a personal point of view, if we continue to regenerate like that, we're shooting ourselves in the foot for the argument of an override in the first place. And that's going to be a, a difficult, I think, hurdle to overcome. So, so regeneration doesn't really represent the budget shortfall, so no. no matter how you look at it. So yeah. it's more of a stabilization to the budget, if you will. We were having this conversation last year at this time, trying to figure out how much free cash to use. Can you speak up, please? Yeah. Sorry. Is that you? Yeah, that's our CT. Yeah, that's When we were having this conversation last year around uh, how much free cash to use, the town account, Sharon, sorry. Um, you were able to give us a number where you, I think you felt reasonably confident that it would, you know, regenerate. And you, you had stated that number at a million dollars. And, and, and in spite of that, we voted for 1.2. Um, this year, are you uh, prepared to give a, a similar kind of confidence around a specific number? Well, given the regeneration, it's hard. I mean, we have very high regeneration, and so it's really hard to give that number because we don't know that this regeneration is going to continue. A lot of it's based on open <coughs> positions, which is not ideal. We mm -hmm. struggle when those positions are open. We need those positions. I mean, it looks like we have $1.3 million in most years in regeneration in the revenue side, but again, they're based on things that may or may not happen. I mean, I guess my comfort level would be at that 1.1 or 1.2 just to be safe. You don't want to go up too high because then now you've got to use that same level the next year just to keep, a, you know, the budget from going down. Um, so I would say that 1.1 or 1.2 would be where I'd be thinking. And those, um, I assume, you know, as you said, some of the positions weren't filled and that's why we get that. And for every position that's open, it's open for three, four months at least, at minimum. Mm -hmm. And so the people who are trying to cover those roles are, are struggling to do that. So those regeneration numbers, numbers come with a lot of pain <laughs> for us. Um, so I'll ask this both on, both, both on the municipal side and the school side. Was there some positions not filled? Or? There were. We had positions that remained open. Some of the funding we gave back were because we had positions open all year. And then a lot of the other was timing of when positions remain open throughout the year or terminations during the year. Mm -hmm. And so this question really for both, are there positions now that you see open that you're, you think we might be struggling to fill? We have, we have we one. We're, 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 we're more fully staffed this year at this time than we were last year at this time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're more fully staffed also, but we are having to definitely struggle on a couple positions that are open. Mm -hmm. People are doing their best to do the work. Um, yeah. It's just the certain markets that are difficult. Yeah. Um, when, when some of us, um, and I assume some of this at least is true with the schools, when you compete against the private sector in a set like engineers, it's very difficult mm -hmm. when the economy is good. People love you when the economy goes the other way, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, go work for the town of Reading. Um, but it's so, it's so good right now, <coughs> unemployment's so low, that that's where we have the toughest time. But would you say the same thing that a little bit more staffed this yes. year at, than yes, last definitely. year? Yes. Yes. So we wouldn't expect to see that <laughs> same. No, I hope not. <laughs> we built our budgets bottom up for every single role. You mm -hmm. know where those people are going to be based on what we're projecting salaries to go up, um, and we don't expect any role to be vacant. We just don't know that when we're making the budget. Right. Right. Uh, back to. To Peter's original question about putting money, more money into FinCom reserves, am I correct in um, my understanding that for for a payment to be made out of um, out of free cash that requires a majority vote of town meeting, for a, for a payment to be made out of the stabilization fund that requires a two thirds vote of ta of town meeting, but for for a payment to be made out of FinCom reserves, that's just, just a vote of FinCom. Just so what? Five out of nine. 
five out of nine. So does that mean that in terms of the ratings agencies liking the thought of money being shifted towards gener gener uh, the general stabilization fund, are they going to be look less favorably on shifting money towards FinCom reserves? Or? I, I would assume for the amount you would discuss, they wouldn't care. Okay. They're going to think yeah, of 100,000 more, yep. more or less. No, okay. they're not going to care. Okay. Now that additional hundred thousand would show up in the operating budget every year, right? FinCom Reserve. Yeah. So it's putting possible additional hundred K strain on. The yeah, and I, I would assume if FinCom wants to do that, which I think is generally a good idea, mm -hmm. you should plan on doing it forever. Right. Yeah. Not just for one year. There's right. no sense right. to that. But if we don't spend it, it goes back to free cash. And Understood. Yeah. Correct. But it's just another as yeah. you're laying out the operating budgets, and it's hundred thousand less to the other areas. What yeah. is FinCom's experience been? I would say I think we usually spend I would say we think of it we do but often it's probably given back much of it has been for overtime that has ended up coming back that's what my yeah. concern but that's that's why I suggested taking it from free cash so it really doesn't mm -hmm. impact the operating budget <laughs> the, uh, it does the same to free cash Available. So if you're not, right. you know, six yeah, we have. Really needed, you really need it. You can go to free cash anyway. But that requires um, a vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need a town meeting. Right? Yeah. And some of it's timing, yeah. at the, as you said. We ran yeah. into it at the end of the year. That, but. How did that get there? Yeah, yeah, sometimes it advances by yeah. itself. I think along those same lines, uh, if you could sit here and demonstrate to me that every year, we were scrambling because the reserve fund was empty and we needed it. But I can, there's many years where we put that 150 right back into free cash. I mean, it's, there's no, I don't, I haven't seen any uh, pattern of spending it down every year that, that we need to increase it. But right, because we tend to beef it back up in the springtime meeting. That's often part of it. Well, we, we always yeah. have. Yeah. You talk, you talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But 150,000 doesn't go as far as it used to. Yeah. So. I know, I agree. <laughs> not an issue we're discussing. In too much. I mean, there's about 100,000 free cash put in there. I mean, when there's strains on putting 100,000 here or there, I, I don't know whether we need to start saving an additional 100,000 for something that we historically mm. haven't needed to use. Mm. Well, again, on it's, a basis. I don't anticipate using it. And I anticipate that it will get turned back to free cash again at the end of the year. But it's still earmarked when the budget year starts where it could be going somewhere else. And it would mean taking another 100,000 100, out of free out cash. Of but it, but it also rate. means that well, we turn back 100,000 more to free cash. Yeah. So it's it's really, it's it's yeah, a wash. Yeah. 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 that way, though, you put an extra 100 in the income reserve fund, you'd spend it at normal rate. So you'd only top off the lovely more now, but you'd have the ability to spend in an off year. You know, that's referred with. That's a one year hit rather than every year. If, you're, if your spend out of that is consistent the way it is today, that'd be a way to have an impact on like a one year. You wouldn't have a drop of check concern. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to allocate 100K out of, out of free cash, right? Yeah. Then that can't be used for any other purpose. It's essentially appropriated. But if you put it into the 150K, make it 250. Spend behavior is the same as it was today. You have the authority to go to 250, but you're almost never going to do it. You've got the cushion you're looking for, but you don't have the tie up of the funds. Because it's just going to be sitting there for the next year. Right? I, again, the purpose of it would be for something that came up very late in the year Correct. where we didn't have the ability to go to town meeting um, and we needed extra cash. So all it is it really is, it's just free or free cash, if you want to look at it that way. Um, additional flexibility. Um. So are you suggesting that whether you use the million one or the million two plus that 100,000 on top of that, 
Right. For the he was break. talking about taking yep. out free cash. Instead of the million okay. one that's in the yeah. current proposal, it's sort of to increase that to 1.3 versus 1.2. It just means every year we'll have to we'll sort of be signing up for another 100,000 yeah. out of free cash to support. So essentially using 100, an extra 100,000 yeah. out of one free two cash. Toward the budget. But then one of the reasons why we would, we would regenerate the free cash is because we didn't need all the 250. So you're really just taking out of the budget what you spend, and it just gives you that flexibility. I don't feel, really feel strongly really one way or the other, I think. But I think it has been the same number for quite a few years, and we did have sort of a tight runway this past spring, so it just allows a better, you know, more decision making at a lower level. But I just want to make clear that then we'd be requesting more out of free cash to balance for that additional 100000 Because I sure don't want to restrict the operating budget based on that decision. Exactly. Uh, agreed, but again, if, uh, if we don't spend it, then it goes back into free cash anyway. So you really just <coughs> make a permanent allocation mm -hmm. out of free cash, mm -hmm. if you want. <coughs> Well, I think at this point, you know, from us, if you're looking for a recommendation, you know, I would say we go with the same 1.2 million that we used last year, and the increased and not change reserves, and leave the reserve. I could go either way because it's only it's 100,000 on eight and a half. It's funding right back in. If we don't touch it, we don't use it. To be honest, I don't really have a, a preference either way. So when I say the 1.2, I actually mean 1.2 towards the budget. So if we were trying to put the additional 100,000, then fine, my number would be 1.3. My focus right now is just what actually goes to the operating budget. Yeah, I can, I can really get there either way on, do we go up the FinCom reserve by 100,000? Uh, but I guess that would then say 1.2 or 1.3. But given what we've seen for regeneration, what we know is likely for regeneration, and the fact that with the balance and the position we're at right now and the climate that we believe we're hearing, you know, throughout the town, if we used a million two and we regenerated zero, we're still in a reasonable position. It's not something we want to do, you know, over and over because no matter what, an override is needed, whether it hopefully comes this year or, you know, moves forward. But I don't think anyone's signing up to continue to do that, but worst case scenario is a million two, we regenerate zero. Mm -hmm. you know, we are, we're in a reasonable yeah. position, and I think that's an unreasonable scenario that we're going to regenerate zero. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my recommendation. I would agree. I think it makes sense to go with the 1.2. As far as the reserve goes, um, Given everything that's happening right now, I'd be inclined to leave it where it is, uh, and then maybe we'll revisit it next year. Uh, I'm concerned about what it'll look like as far as why we're hoarding this extra hundred thousand in such an economically fragile time. I too am comfortable with the 1.2, with the only caveat on. Um, capital, I want to be very sensitive to if we find we need more money for the security because I think we're woefully short there. Take it out of FinCom Reserves. <laughs> 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 okay, 250. Okay, you got me. Well, um, you, can't, you can't, well, I don't think you Because I don't want to be decreasing capital when we know we've got capital needs. <clears throat> so we shouldn't hesitate to take it out of free cash because I'd be comfortable taking more out of free cash, but... I'd rather leave it for the one time once we define the needs. Um, shall we have an auction for the uh, uh, <laughs> free cash level? Just wanted to say I, I would also support the 1.2 based on um, our experience, particularly this based on our experience last year and how we had to work so hard to come up with a creative solution um, to, uh, on a one-time band-aid approach for this 
um, for the schools and the foreign language program. I don't think we want to be um, shortchanging the operational budget um, in these financial times. Um, and I would, I would support an additional one hundred thousand dollars towards FinCom reserves because um, although we haven't come across needing it, I think you know we did dip into it this year, and it, it's it's a safety net that can, if we don't need it, just go right back to free cash. I think it, there's no there's no harm there. It it only provides us an additional tool that we will have if necessary. And then go to one point three. So then it would essentially be 1.3, yes. So if we um, put an extra 100000 into the uh, free cash, forget about FinCon reserves, um, right now, um, I mean, you'll have to find some place to spend it, which I'm sure won't be a problem. But uh, And that also, with, given our policy around, I mean, uh, given our policy around 7%, you know, we, that will still be in a, in a healthy position. Do we, vote, do we vote on separate? Um, yeah, why don't we... I, I have one more question. Since we have both our town manager and our superintendent here. Um, so last year we did face the unusual situation of um, the school committee presenting um, a budget over what had originally been discussed. So this year, as we're going into a challenging year, as we're agreeing to the 1.2 or possibly the 1.3, um, are we potentially facing another situation where we'll be asked for another half a million or, or I'm concerned about not receiving um, a potentially balanced budget? Mm -hmm. Because I what, I what I'm concerned about is, you know, one of the a common theme in the feedback from this uh, selectman survey was the lack of transparency and the trust. So if, if we're faced with another situation where we come up with or we, we release additional funds from free cash to cover certain um, programs or services, then uh, no, we're didn't. right back to where we started as far as not being honest with yeah. residents about what the cost of running the town is. And I, I appreciated what they were trying to do, but I am concerned about the optics going forward. There's, there's, a, there's a somewhat of an answer that probably isn't what you meant, but I'll start with that. Um, the reason we didn't use 1.2 million last winter and we used, chose to use, the reason we used 1.1 million instead of 1.2 million last year that you had authorized is because we had a savings and accommodated cost that happened since guidance to then, and we just thought that was the right thing to do. Um, by charter, I have to give you a balanced budget, so that part's easy. Um, it's a question of how do you express to the community what your needs are without actually voting? And that's, I don't know how you answer that question. Um, you know, the school committee's budget is what's voted and handed to the town manager. The selectmen have a lot of opinions and discussion, but they don't technically vote a budget by the charter. So it's a little uneven, I guess, in that sense. But certainly the school committee's right to vote any budget they want for any reason they want. And last year, I did present a balanced budget to the school committee. However, there was some deep cuts in that balanced budget, which is what prompted the school committee to vote an unbalanced budget. Yep. I mean, just, I mean as I understand it, what the process is, is that we're voting, kind of almost doing a, a dual path here voting the budget, which is basically allocating resources of the funds that are currently available. And then we are putting forth things that we would like to see added to the budget if the taxpayers are so inclined to do that. So I think the process this year might be a little bit different than last year when um, the override wasn't so, it wasn't, the process of the new override wasn't certain. So I would hope, or my, what I would understand to be the case is that um, there'll be a budget that's voted, and then the selectmen are going to kind of talk about 
on the municipal side the things that this budget doesn't address. Um, just last night, if anybody watched the selectman meeting, we had the chiefs come in. Um, essentially, um, between the fire department and the police department, um, we could be adding nine positions and still not be where we need to be. So there's a lot of things on the municipal side. I know on the school committee side, on the school side, there's a ton of stuff. So the way I kind of see this process going forward is that there's a budget based on allocated resources. And then um, both of the committees will talk about, well, if we have more money, this is what we're gonna do. And again, the results of the survey suggested that people would like to kind of see what those things are gonna be. And that's where kind of the craft comes in. I mean, the school committee will obviously are the things that we think are important to run the schools, and we have X amount of dollars. This is how we're going to do it. A, B, C, D, D. We're going to do it on the selectman side. We're going to come up with a number, and then we're going to go out to the voters and say, okay, this is the budget you get. This is the budget that you get if you vote a little more, more money. And then ultimately the voters are going to decide. So I, I see the process being kind of a lot cleaner this year than it was last year when the prospect of not knowing when an override was going to come and that might have caused some of the pressure for the school committee to vote a budget that, was, that, that came on balance. So um, this year, I don't think that really is going to happen for the budget. And then there's the kinds of things that this is the budget that we really think we need, and ultimately it's the Lord that we're going to decide. So that I understand is the process, and hopefully everybody comes out of here agreeing that that's the process. I think, I think it's, it's a kind of to what Barry said, it's a, it's it's along the lines of the timing. I mean, we uh, we the sense is that there's going to be an override on that on the ballot. So, you know, depending on I mean, we will have passed the budget by then. We certainly wouldn't pass an unbalanced budget. I don't think um, in prior to any type of override vote. I can't tell you what the discussion will be at, depending on that vote, but let's see what happens. Jeff, when will you have a budget out of school? Uh, What's the date? January, January 19th. January 18th. The earliest you're going to know, the question is to whether you have um, programs that have to be cut to balance. It would be on or off that date. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, We'll have our a budget from the superintendent. I think in early, January. Early, early January. Early January. So we'll know where his exactly. head is, and then you know we'll direct from there what we want to see. So to the court, that's your last. And we'll vote on that on January. I think it was um, Vanessa asked um, to the point of when we'll know if additional funds are. Needed to maintain the school levels. You're, you're talking the January, the earliest. You have that year. <coughs> That's pretty late. So what's the December 18th meeting? You, it That's won't be. That won't be the initial budget. No, that's the vote. No, 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 December. 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 Oh, December. It's sorry. it's a potential public hearing, but that. That's oh, just a, to get input. Yeah. yeah. You expect. At the but the January. budget will not be yeah. presented on, on that night. Can I, can I ask a question? <clears throat> so, Bob, I, I think I heard early in the presentation that maybe I heard the wrong. You said to have a, a uh, sustainable budget to do the things we're doing now would require, you said, three and a, three and a quarter percent? <clears throat> Not necessarily from today's budget, but in general, uh, a budget going from one year to the next. Versus the two and a half that right. we see up there. So, right. Or two and a quarter. I, getting old, I can't do that in my head. What, how much <laughs> more free cash would that be? Um, the problem isn't so much that, it's that neither budget is at where it should be in order to then want to be level service. That's the biggest right. gap. You know, the need for the override is to fix that problem. The structural problem. Right. And then every year we tried to put in some kind of sustainability element, which was about 500 grand a year between us. Um, that every year we projected their actual revenues available for the budget versus what a break even would be cost us four or 500,000 a year. So that's how much free cash, in a sense, you would need 
in a, in a typical year, if you were satisfied with today's budget, you want to do that next year. It's uh, four or five hundred thousand more than what FinCom is traditionally uh, right. vote. So I know we had the discussion prior to the last override where we had uh, to be able to for sustainability. Do we have a sense <coughs> for that, John? I don't think do we have a sense for that now. Uh, oh no, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, not to solve the structural deficit. Do oh, we have okay. a sense for that yet, or? No, not yet. It's not going to be better than last year. Yeah. And you know, last year we sat down and seven and a half million dollar override, I believe, had a million change for sustainability. So let's just say six million was the gap last year. It's not going to be small. Okay. So the six million was to make us healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally. And, and it's a point worth saying that, and, and this is not going to sound good. If the override had passed uh, a year ago, not everyone would have gotten all the services that they were asking for. That was not what the override did. The override restored a certain amount of things that had been cut and added a couple things that were desired. But you know, if you remember all the line item details, um, I think some people imagined if this budget passes, I'll get everything I want. And John and I have talked a lot about that. That's not going to be true with any override. You know, to give a real simple example, and I, and I mean this genuinely, Reading taxpayers pay about $7,500 for a household for taxes. Um, there are communities that they have, have expressed they want to be like. They're paying eleven, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year in taxes. The override we proposed was less than a $1,000 increase. It wasn't going to bring us to that level of services. And I don't think it ever will in Reading, quite honestly. So it's just important that the community understands and an override of that size or smaller is going to help very much, but not necessarily give everyone everything they want. If I could, talking about that, that override, my understanding was that a bunch of that, that, there was some of that to restore services, and there was some of that to give us an eight to 10 year right. time frame before we needed the next one. So, I mean, if, if we were looking at a three to four year, maybe we say, hey, this economic development, we're really right. hoping that in three to four years, instead of eight to 10, we'll have some real economic development going on. What's the number, I mean, it isn't $6 million to get us three or four years, right? What? Well, it, it's absolutely true that the longer you looked out exponentially, it, right. it's harder to find. If you're going to look at an override that everyone is going to agree financially works for three or four years, that's fairly easy to do. You know, we have enough wiggle room in the revenues and the turnbacks and, and this and that that we can assume that away. Let's just pretend there's no structural deficit in a year in any given year for the next three years. It's only going to be four or five hundred thousand a year if we're wrong. We could surely afford a million or a million and one. So that's pretty easy. I'm, I'm not saying that's right, but. When you're, when you're talking, as, as we chose to do early, which in retrospect you know, probably didn't work, is we chose to tell the community and assure them, we will not be back for at least 10 years, because the last time was 13 years ago. Um, I don't think the community valued that statement given what it cost, the fairest way I can say it. And that's fine. So, you know, the selectmen have had no discussion about this, not even off, offline with me, but you know, if a shorter override is then proposed, it's certainly going to be smaller for the sustainability piece, without any doubt. Right, and understand. I think that was a really it's a hard concept. Responsible, financially responsible thing to do to sort of build it in the business model. I think it made the number too big, and that was probably yeah, a mistake. Also hard to understand. Really and you've got to understand that when we did the override in 2003, there was zero dollars put in for that kind of. How long will this last? None. This is really, we've got to get through this deficit and a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred thousand dollars for a highway, you know, street. So it does seem like it's the right thing to do, but it just makes it too expensive. Yep. Can I put the thousand dollar increase in taxes in another perspective? Mm -hmm. Let's look at a thousand dollar increase in, in taxes on the property. 
That means over a, over a whole year, I have to take that money, or, or the people in the town have to take that money out of their regular operating budget, or the living budget, to make up the shortfall. And, and everyone puts a thousand dollars in like it's nothing. But in fact, it is something. It's an impact on a person's fixed income budget. And that's the rub. That's where I don't hear any kind of feeling that this is important to people in town. There's got to be at least 10,000 retirees in this town, or at least people over 65. That's almost a third of the population. Maybe it's less than that, but it's in that range. And I'd like to see some sympathy or some understanding of what these people are facing. That's my main point, that I don't hear that discussion. I hear these bantered around over the 2.5% increase on taxes, though it's insignificant, which it really is not. And I, I guess maybe I'm speaking more, more than one time, but that's the issue, really. Some fairness for the elderly and the people who live in the town for a long while. There's no money tree in Reading. I've driven all the streets here for over 45 years. There was no money tree in Reading that we go pick dollar bills off. No, and I, I understand. We tend to talk very clinically about it. But yes, it means it's real impact for people, and I, I understand that. And I, I think it's just hard when we're just trying to balance numbers. But yes, there's real emotion associated with Government that. Government at local level and the state and the federal have got to learn to live within their budgets. I strongly object to that characterization. We are nothing like state or federal government. Nothing. I just, from a blanket point of view, at the federal, the state, and the local level, there seems to be this increase in infinite amount of money if we keep taxing people. It's not infinite, but you know what I mean. If the federal government had Prop 2 and a half, it would look much different. The federal mm -hmm. government is another problem, but I'm just, at the local level, we should start at the local level. One of the, uh, the problems that we do have is the state aid number and the fact that that uh, does not increase at the same rate that um, other budget costs um, do they um, I think you forecast a two and a half percent increase but typically it's much less than that which puts a burden on the rest of the uh, the budget because um, the other numbers have to go up more to make up for the lack in state aid um, I believe you said last year Bob that if state aid had ridden, risen at two and a half percent we probably wouldn't have a budget problem now um, but it hasn't so Do you want to make a motion on um, federal, uh, federal Reserve? Uh, FinCom Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody want to uh, make a motion on, we'll start with a motion on FinCom Reserve. And, yep. Sir, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Richard Coco, Precinct 4. Richard Coco, thank you. To Mr. Coco's point, um, Bob, I know we had talked previously about um, the senior relief efforts. Mm -hmm. Um, and right now it's based on the circuit breaker. It's a state guideline. Mm -hmm. um, are there other ways, I know, I know staffing can sometimes be a challenge um, in addressing any, uh, if we institute some kind of other application for relief, but is there something else we can do to address those that may not qualify for the circuit breaker, but could otherwise benefit from some type of relief? No. We, we looked over every stone we could find, and we created a new package that no one in the state had. Um, the state, um, the majority leader of the House, um, said that he liked Redding's plan and would like to roll it out statewide sometime. There is no such thing that's available for seniors in Massachusetts on the property tax side. There's other programs. Um, <clears throat> Could we have done it a different way? Uh, Whalen and Sudbury did do it different ways. Um, one of them just gave up the property tax revenue entirely. Whatever seniors had off their taxes, nobody paid it. One of the property, one of the communities did what we suggested, which is we can't just give it up, we'll shift it. So that'll be up to the selectmen in the next month or so. Um, could there have been other methods other than to tie it to the circuit breaker? Absolutely. And, and there would have been a staffing cost. But honestly, that seemed so simple and so non-judgmental on our part. We were saying, why, why ever the state decided to set up this policy for their tax relief, why don't we just use it? And you know, the amount we didn't necessarily agree with, and that's why the <coughs> whole petition 
gave the flex some flexibility to the selectmen to go higher or lower than the exact amount of the circuit breaker. Um, and, and plus, when you roll out a new prog program, you want to be careful for the first couple of years because you just don't know uh, what kind of applications you'll get. We know what it is this year. Honestly, I would expect the second year to be higher because some people didn't know or they didn't file their state taxes to claim the circuit breaker because they didn't understand this thing. Um, so this is the kind of program we were approved to do for three years. We would hope that it goes beyond that, but technically that's all we have. Um, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to the assessors. They created something that didn't exist, but they looked everywhere else first to just do something else that was legal, and there isn't one. I'm, I'm sorry you're not feeling sympathy. Um, I hope that in, in seeing the actions that the town took with respect to the senior tax relief that that feels a little bit like some sympathy because um, that wasn't you know, a, a town-wide and a town meeting effort to provide some relief. Um, I hope that provides some Let amount. Let me give you my impression of that tax relief. Two hundred fifteen applied, I think. Applied, I think. Six or seven thousand people in Reading fall into the category of people with fixed income that don't have the income potential that people working full time have. So what's two and a half? What's two and a half? Two hundred fifty people. A drop in the bucket. It's a feel good number. We're doing something. Two hundred fifty dollars. Two hundred fifty people. But nothing for the other seven hundred and fifty. Do you know what the income level was for a circuit breaker? It wasn't very high. It was $80,000. 80? That's not a big number. When you have a home and, and, and fixed income with insurance and other things, 80000 is not a big number. They're, they're working families who don't make $80,000. Yeah. They're not getting the relief. So I think that um, the fact that the town sort of understood that there are people struggling who don't have the ability to go and fix the income. I, I think it is a big thing. So, um, and like Bob said, next year, as people hear about it, I think we're going to get much. With all due respect, isn't that a conversation that we should have maybe in April or March? Which uh, conversation? Mr. Coco was talking about whether or not, I mean, well, it, it, senior tax relief did not add or subtract money for the town's budget. Right. So it's it's not that it's not off the topic, but it has nothing to do with how much money you can spend. No, I'm just talking about Mr. Coco's essentially lobbying to not have an override. Is what I'm oh, yeah, that's so selectmen so haven't even discussed that. that we'll discuss so. it later. And that's not necessarily why we're here tonight. Um, yeah, I think I'll ask for a motion on the uh, increase to the FinCom reserves. We'll start there and then. Uh, Go to free cash after that. So somebody wants to make a motion. I can't, right? You can't. You can't. Oh, I get it. Oh, I move to increase the FinCom reserve to two hundred and fifty thousand. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. And now the um, free cash number. Um, right now it's set at one point one. Do we want to? Uh, 1.2. Go well, right now. It's 1.1. Yeah, it's in there. It's one, one, one. We have voted on it. It's in the budget. One point one. That's proposed. So. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, we can start at 1.2 and and go down if we need to, or we can. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to to use 1.2 million in free cash. Okay. Sorry. Second. All those in favor. Okay, so that's um, six and one. Um, and now uh, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the um, thoughts on the override. I, I think those have already come up if anybody has any further uh, comments on the override question um,
anything, um, John, do you have anything to say further about the override? Uh, just supposed to have free form discussion about an override question. I don't know. I actually think that's inappropriate for this. Meeting. Yeah, okay. That belongs to this Okay. Um, and we've already reviewed the uh, public budget meetings that are up there. Um, so I think that uh, pretty much ends the financial forum, and then uh, we have some other things to vote on in connection with town meeting. But um, people don't have to hang around for that if they don't want to. So. Yeah, we'll have a five minute recess and then we'll. Uh, <laughs>
try to explain it, but we had to borrow less inside the levy. And we could have gotten away with, and let's say it was instead of three million, it's a million and a half, because that's about what it is. <coughs> if we had done nothing else but say, okay, we'll borrow only a million and a half, we were fine. Believe it or not, we were all set. And who would have been paying for that is the taxpayers that voted the exclusion in high school would not have been relieved of that obligation that if you remember how debt exclusions work, it's never made whole until the project is complete and all the accounting is done. In the olden days, the taxpayer, if you will, we borrowed money from the taxpayers until the MSBA paid us full. And in a sense, that's what happened here. Until the books were settled, the taxpayers were too, paying too much. Um, Sharon and I talked about it and we decided um, it's kind of two pieces. One way, the taxpayers should be given a hundred or a million and a half back. I forget what it is here, 150,000 for 10 years ago. We should give them that back because that's how that's what we intended to do all along was have the ins inside the levy pay for it. But we can't do that, the IRS won't let us. Um, so we should uh, raise 150,000 less a year in taxes and then we hold for what we intended. And we could do that. But as we talked about it more, and we looked at the legal costs that were borne inside the levy over the years, we thought it was much fairer to effectively have excluded debt paid for those legal costs also. So you've already seen why I'm not going to explain it to you. All right, so it's just a question of what was that being So debt. when the selectmen vote a tax rate this year, they're going to vote one that's approximately $75,000 less than it could be. So that the people who voted for the high school exclusion are effectively paid back some amount, seventy-five thousand, um, because the IRS forced us to By putting more in the, ex in the debt exclusion. So debt service, we're reducing it at fall town meeting, but not as much as we could. I, I think it's 180000 less than we budgeted. We've taken 140 less because that's all we need. Um, and that's the reason there's less TLT debt than we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to have to explain that public because talk about confusion. Talk about confusion. It's just no way. Somebody's going to ask you. It's not like we didn't pay the full $6 million. We did. It's just taxpayers kicked in for the legal costs that we always thought should have been eligible uh, for MSBA reimbursement. And the only reason um, it effectively was not given to the taxpayers outside the levy is because the uh, 
contractor went bankrupt and someone put a lien on his assets and so we had to start paying the litigation out of my budget instead of John's, and which was the general fund instead of the construction fund. So it's very complicated issue. So when we saw the certified free cash. It's not certified yet. Oh, okay. Almost certified. <laughs> that last column we talked how much we had spent in most recent. Half, two of that was for the settlement, right? I think you paid a million two. Oh, million two. Because we had discussed two million two. Yeah, that's what I thought it was higher. Was it two million two? It might have been. I think it was two two. I think I yeah, was two. in my head I was like around two and a half. I and think that's you're why right. I think two two is. We yeah. had imagined three million in debt. It was eight hundred thousand right. in the construction fund. So yeah, yeah two point two. Okay, that's what I thought. That's Just want to clarify. clarify when we're, again, when we're like, oh, that's such a big number. Well, that yeah. talk about it one time that I'm right. comfortable yeah. is not going to be a recurrent one. Yeah. Well, that that one hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's hope. We haven't fully paid this. Close the books on this. Can we talk about the half million for winning? Yeah. What? What's that about? Like, is it? Um, I know I've seen it be placed, but why, how, why is it urgent to take? Get that? It's a badly built school. Oh, okay. I know, because that's, that's how it would be. Exactly yeah, what I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah, they're I'm they're like, they're they, it's the newest right. school in town, and here we are. Mm -hmm. It's the newest school. It is the most energy inefficient school. Oh, no. It's the worst built school. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, Joe Huggins, as part of the selectman's budget process, probably should do this. We can, uh, um, We'll, um, and, I, and again, I, I invite you and I urge you to come to all the selectmen meetings you can because you're going to get a lot more detail this year and I don't think you have time for it when you guys meet. Mm -hmm. um, Joe's going to go over the results of performance contracting and look at each building as to how successful or unsuccessful it was and how they stack up against each other. And, and what end is not great. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a fact. Okay. Um, there was two options. One, well, one was to wait another year or two until damage happened. No, it was possible to that money we could. Um, the other was to just roof over the whole thing, um, rip the skylights out. They put in skylights that were completely inappropriate for the design of the school with wood. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the hardest thing I've ever done is oversee this project. It's impossible. Like, hey, there's no air conditioning. It's just mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and then Public the other choice is just replace them now. And you will see later on because of the new growth, we have to spend money. We could reduce the use of free cash, certainly, mm. but using you know, 400000 or so in, in capital is Makes okay. Yeah. Oh, so why not the decision just get rid of them? Um, because then we would have had to install a lot of lighting because it would have been too dark. Oh, so oh. They said, oh no, I got gotcha. you. Okay. I said, just put it on the roof. I was kidding. They said, yeah, we can look at that. We just need to discuss it. Is there a problem? And these will, these will last. Yeah. I'm going to put solar yeah, panels on the roof. That's another discussion. Yeah. Um, I forget the number, but Joe is going to get a warranty. We have like a 12 or 24 month warranty on the last ones. He's getting like a 20 month warranty on the last ones. That's great. Okay. Um, and then you have a lot of description on the EMS simulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's all. I mean, everyone's saying necessary now. I understand. Like, I read, well, I read the, the capital plan a few years out. I forget exactly. Yeah, twenty three. Looked at all the items. Um, you know, and as I talk to the firefighters, this is a life saving thing. So it's like you know, we can't not do it. Plus, they cut the grants. So. And we can now. So I, I'm all for it. Right, I'm, I agree. I just, yeah, yeah, I just feel like it. So, it's but it is capital priorities. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like I mean, sometimes things along the technology see, lines. I'm not going to bore you. See a lot of yeah. pluses. And Joe added a lot of high, high efficiency boilers to all the schools over the next 10 years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still needing a little bit of convincing as to, and because we're so efficient on energy, whether you know you have to do that. But the high school, yes, you have to. The other schools, right, will get further. I'm not sure those are essential. Um, there are two schools that need site improvements. DPW has tried to do this work at the end of the years when they have money. And finally, they said, we can't tackle Joshua Eaton, and I think it's Birch Meadow the year after. You have to budget for that because there's just too much work that we have sometimes 50 or 75,000 in our fence line item or parking lot line item we can do. It's not going to help those sites. So that'll be a new item for two years. I talked about the downtown infrastructure thing a little bit. Um, I think the rest of it is just kind of pluses and minuses. 
<clears throat> in terms of the pluses and minuses, Bob, what does yeah. it mean um, that you know are are the the changes uh, to the capital improvements program mean that we have um, an you know a net uh, of the plus of four sixty five thousand for FY eighteen, but then a net negative two ninety four thousand for FY nineteen, and what does the various other changes mean? Like, do we need to be at a zero? Like, does the net need to end no. up being zero? It makes, no it makes no difference. All we're saying is the FY eighteen capital plan <coughs> is requested to be higher than it was last April, mm -hmm. and the FY nineteen capital plan is requested to be lower than it was voted last April. So we have saved, if you will, or removed okay. 300000 away from capital. And if you look on the next page, a big chunk of that is some of those um, high school projects. Yeah. So sort of teeing up to make it a debt exclusion. We'll see. I, I don't honestly think I told the select on this until I just, John and I and the chair of the vice chairs of that. It's just, you know, they're telling us we have to do it. It's not going to be safe if we don't do it. Couple of years, um, I was at Acton Foxborough at the high school football game, standing on a new track, and I talked to the track coach there. I said, What did it cost? He said, 850000 three years ago. Mm -hmm. I said, So do you, what do you think we get for 150000 He said, Nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and he used to be a teacher. Right? So when we started oh, looking at the numbers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He does. Sure. Um, and then their, their turf field was done this year. I don't remember the number, but it was more than a million. And uh, a resident donated most of the traffic on the turf. That made us think. These numbers have been sitting in the capital plan for years. What was someone thinking? And then when we figured that out, well, they were just thinking a little bit of work as needed. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, why couldn't we get the Patriots? They used it for one week. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the They worked crazy. it out too fast and threw it away. It's called recycled. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. You know, I said one other question, the best thing, and I, I, was, I thought of this as I was reading it. Is there offset to that? Like, can, to can to offset it? Can Wakefield, for example, or oh. use it and rent it or That's a good whatever? Question. Like, because it just um, feels like no yeah. one's, no oh, one's using. And I, I'm not going to use it. It's a, it's a, it's a stupid field? word. No one's using the dummy 24/7. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you can. Good. Is yes. there an offset to the 150? Oh, like, could oh, you geez. save? Could you save? You know. A hundred grand? I don't know. I mean, who knows? I don't know what, what it is. Like, other communities use it and we rent it or yeah, that's a good question. or buy it jointly. I don't know. I was, right. just, thinking, right. I guess I was just thinking there could be People maybe. We buy them. I'm guessing it's a license thing that you license to do it yourself and you can't share it because mm. that's what software mm -hmm. licenses do. But you know, if, we, if Wakefield or someone else is interested, you know, maybe we can each buy it for less than what one would cost. Right. That's what I was thinking. Like, as I was like, reading sorry, through. Less than two. Would cost. Less than two. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I know, because you got to look at everything that's not 100% utilized because... Right, that's all I'm thinking. Well, ask the chief, is this something you can share? Yeah. 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 I don't have any idea. Yeah. It kind of seems like it would be. Yeah, that's what, when I was reading through it, that was my thought. It was, it was like, this This seems like a perfect shared opportunity, but yeah. again, like you said, maybe licensing limits that. Who knows? There's probably a reason you can't, but... Well, we and they can share it down at Camp Curtis Gill. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what made me think of Wakefield, to be honest. I was reading through it. We have software. Software <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, right, right. And that's the revenue stream. So um, there's a couple of other enterprise fund changes. Nothing in the November town meeting. Uh, that's the gist of our report. Do you want me to just go through them all? Do you want to vote at the end or do you want to vote each one and then decide each one? Vote each one? Sure. Okay. Uh, so you motion on Article 3. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept Article 3 as written. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> Further discussion, as the case may be? There being no further discussion, I'll take a vote. All those in favor of Article 3 as proposed? Opposed? Just gotta make sure. What's the date? I think I did. This. I know. I was just gonna say. Yeah. It's, it's November. It's like the second week, and it's not yeah. like less than ten. Right. I'm going end of October. Okay. So I'll take this um, one. The next one is. Let's see. It's not much going on in terms of changing budget. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the 
there's that capital increase I would just describe to you, the debt service decrease. I'll have to think of a little simple way to talk about it. Oh, gosh. Right, that's why you brought it up. Yeah. And then there's two um, relatively small requests. Um, the requests were substantially higher, but it just we can't sustain it. Um, I, I have agreed to increase the hours of human health services directly through next year. Uh, and this is what it will cost. Um, I've also agreed to hire or to have staff up more building inspectors. Hours. You just can't even believe how busy both of these groups are. Um, we have added Friday hours for inspectors just because there's so much going on in town that they can't keep up. Um, you know, and I think we're clean on this anyway, but the other option to pay for those hours too or that account, right? Um, I did Where the look, permit but money there is a, there's a maximum you can spend each year. We're pretty close. It's 200000 Oh, from that account? And because of economic development expenses and salaries, we're pretty close to 200000 plus there's an overtime offset. So there's definitely not 27000 Now that's something we could look to change, right? Yeah. With an article? Because... You could, and, and that's that's another discussion. And I, I'll have to look, but I think it was happened, of course, at FinCom and in town meeting. We have a couple of large-ish projects lined up. Do we want to put their permit fees into the permit fee fund? And we did look back, and I, I forget. It's pretty the big now, right now, five though. projects where that was done. I thought it was only three long ago, but actually um, the one on Haven Street went into this revolving fund. And the point was, aside from how we're doing it now, it's things associated with what the project is or like projects. So to the extent we have this um, downtown infrastructure study, it should be paid for by mm -hmm. someone who moved in or will move in. Um, until uh, last year, uh, or I should say this year, last year was a bigger number. We used a certain amount of overtime because of document storage project. Uh, we got an estimate for a company to, uh, to work for us that was 600 grand. We ended up doing it for about 90 grand of overtime over the last five years to digitize all our uh, inspection records. So that's been well worth it. We don't have that anymore. I believe in this year's budget, the overtime uh, was about cut in half. This year's yeah, because of that. I would use less, um, less of those funds. So, in general, yes, we should use them. How much we use kind of depends on are we going to replenish them with any project. But if I remember correctly, that, fund that fund's quite high, isn't it? Um, if we use 175000 a year for three years, then it's, not, then it's out of money. That's kind of what our plan Oh, where are you getting the 175? Between uh, the economic development director's wages. Oh, yeah. The, uh, oh, that's where it came out. That's right. right. That's what's getting right. good because we wanted to adjust it down. Yeah. That's right, of course. That's where that. Yeah. 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 And then the last one, um, and we knew this um, the library project. I don't know if the library has discussed this uh, in public. The automated books order um, costs, it's a license for that. We got it free for the first something like 15 or 18 months. They've requested 22,000. Their trustees voted that. I have 20, um, and they are willing to absorb what I like to call the books tax. They, the 15% materials that should be on top of that, they're willing to oh, yeah, yeah. use uh, state aid or whatever funds they have available. To absorb that. I believe their budget is somewhere just over 30. So, what, is, what does the books order do? Have you seen it upstairs? No. So when you return the books, you just put it on the conveyor belt. It's really, it's just, yeah. it's really pretty amazing. I've been inside and watched it work. It's really interesting. The book comes in on a conveyor belt. It reads the code. It spins it around to read the code. And when it finds it, it tells it where to go in like ten, ten minutes or something. Like that. Its accuracy rate is very high. Um, once it gets to the right place, it doesn't really get to the places. So. The twenty-two thousand is software. Per year? Yes. Holy it's cow. It's not software. It's, oh. a, uh, it's like a copier. It's a huge piece of machinery. Oh, so it's renting it's, the equipment. No, it's the maintenance contract. On oh, the it. maintenance contract. Mm -hmm. This is a lot, a lot of discussion Holy I had with the trustees. If we didn't have yeah. this machine, we hired all the return books would fall into <laughs> one bucket. And, right, just make sure I understand this. Yeah. You'd pick it up, look at it, and go put it on the shelf. Right? Yeah. So labor would probably be significantly more. 
with the financial condition of the project, I was not willing to buy this out of the project. So the trustees stepped up and they voted, I don't know, 180,000 to stay eight or 200,000. But right now, this, the reader spits it into five different buckets, which ten, or, or ten, ten, whatever <laughs> number, right? Ten, and then a, a librarian or some one person picks right. them up. Well, y yes. What are you driving it, at? It is a little more. <laughs> it's, it's also like, in, it's like inventory control. It also remembers, aha, you've brought this book back, and it, it's all digitized. That's what's so they have a running, right. accurate list of where the books are or aren't. All right. So it, I understand now. Okay. It's a warehouse management system. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> okay. right. That's just twenty grand a year. That's just putting hefty. That's it's incredible. worth pointing out, though, that because of this renovation, the staffing demands yeah. changed for the library. So they have a desk down here that now that didn't exist previously, which now needs to be manned. And so it sounds silly to have a giant piece of equipment that sorts books. It, that part doesn't sound silly. It's the twenty-two thousand a year that sounds right. silly. Right. Right, and you could, what, what would, yeah, you add up all those costs and you say you could have hired two librarians that do more than just put yeah, books they, back on the shelves or put them in the mint. The trustees uh, had a thorough discussion of this and they knew that it was going to be very hard to add staff. Mm -hmm. um, but if they had a piece of equipment that could replace some staff hours, they could just move staff around. And they felt that the $22,000 for the piece of equipment was much more productive than they would have otherwise got by uh, spending twenty-two thousand on staff. I'm going to ask the, the, the obvious question: long-term contract. Right. I don't remember what they signed. Um, unless they go to town meeting, it's three years or less. So I don't know. Right, this thing, but a three-year. Could you? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't is know. this? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Right. I don't, twenty-two it's seems just, crazy to me. Right. It, it does. Yeah, I was saying monopoly age. on it because. There's right. no competition there. What are they doing for twenty-two thousand um, dollars? You're not going to like my answer, which is what I heard, and I'll just repeat: it's uh, not a completely reliable piece of equipment. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, it's what uh -huh. the trustees voted to do. It's, yeah. their, it's their call. Yes. Yeah. If, if the town meeting or you don't give them this twenty-two thousand, they have to find it in their budget. Just a lot of money, considering they don't have a big budget. Yeah, yeah, million dollars budget. I, I, I oh, agree. Wait, it's why just is it? Why is it in the library oh, wages? It just it kills me. It's like oh, I'm sorry, that should be expensive. Oh, oh okay. The line okay. okay. It is, but think about how much it costs to have librarians available to sort all the books. Mm -hmm. It costs more than the twenty-two thousand. Yeah. No, no, so, no, I'm with you. And I'm not, just from a and not providing you, reference. Well, I think the, the important it's part too is that it's it's not just sorting the books because that's right. initially it's where I was going. <laughs> if it were just sorting the books, we could hire someone who wasn't a librarian. Right. It's right, very right. possible to pick books up and put them back on a shelf. Right. But not for twenty two thousand. But this isn't getting to the shelf. Probably oh, less. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to the shelf. Also true. Right. You could just manage how often. I mean, you we got to look like that's what they're charging, shelf. but it's, it's just not crazy. Ideal, but it's right. It could be a really community service, service thing. I'll make mean. a motion to accept yeah. Article Four as written. All right. <laughs> Second. Also, I won't go over if you don't need to, but there's all the sources of funds uh, with no free cash. Just a couple of parts. You saw the new growth and then state aid. Here's the 75,000 I explained that's not going to be assessed to the tax levy. We'll have to come up with a simple explanation of that. Now, the state aid one confused me, though, because I thought initially it looked like it was coming in less than expected, and that's why we order. transferred um, and about to that number, I thought. Whatever and number we used in the budget, it was not the two and a half. We ended up knocking it down. Two and a half, then there wouldn't be excess. Um, but through some process through the spring, um, the final number Sharon used was, I don't know, let's say 1% of the state. Hmm. That turned out it was 1.6 or whatever the yeah. number was. Yeah. Um, had she stuck to the 2.5%, you'd be needing money. Yeah. We didn't oh, yeah, get yeah. A two and, a half. Okay. and I can't remember yeah. honestly when she did that. Anyway, my motion is to be a second. Second. Yeah. Oh. All those in favor? Seven zero.
Hey, you can skip five. We don't know if any unknown bills. Oh, wait. Do we, who wants to take this one for a time? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, skip five. Uh, you know, surplus kept coming in the last two days, as we kept seeing. Mm -hmm. So you, you may not have seen the two fire items at the bottom. Schools will have stuff uh, next April. All right. Motion to approve Article 6. Second. Second. All those in favor? 7 0. Um, uh, I made it. Phone. Yeah, I second that. And then this is another. Oh, we don't have to. Not here that you could sign the article. Just for fun. <laughs> All right. So who wants to take this? Who wants to take this oh, one? David. I'm just kidding. David. <laughs> 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 just for fun. Uh, Did anyone volunteer you, for Article Six? Not yet. I will. Yeah. Okay. We're, I thought we were setting up David. <laughs> I was hoping we get it. Let's 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 get we, send, we, we sell, what we need to do is raise $10 million. What happens yes. is the market decides, and I'm not going to go into all the details of why, that a um, $120 price on the bond is the most efficient price for the brokers to sell it at. So if you sold $10 million at that price, you'd be raising $12 million. That's not what you need. You need $10 million. So you knock down the $10 million to $8.5 million, whatever the math is. to get you close. So you sell eight and a half million dollars of debt at 120 bucks each, instead of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 10 million at 100 bucks mm -hmm. each. But technically, town meeting has authorized you to sell more debt. We could have sold 12 million dollars, even though we only needed 10 million, which always seemed weird. Um, so in, for the last few years, and this is a, a market condition that's only existed for about three or four years, um, we then, you know, Sharon feels that Agrees, we should remove that previous uh, allowance by town meeting because you don't need it. The project is done. Why should you still have a million dollar and whatever it is authorization out there? Right. Yeah. So it's a clean up. And, and finally, through bond council and the DOR, we've got a method in the future when we have articles to sell debt that we will never have to do this again. Which told me that the interest rates are not going to rise, so the business is happening anyways. But there was no mechanism in the past to avoid this. Now there's an agreed upon path where there's this language when you appropriate the debt to begin with oh, that will accomplish this. So there's an issue. Okay. Does it have to do with callability or? Nope. The, the dollar price at which the Duration. Sold. Duration? It just, it's good debt. What? It's a good bidding war. As it, well, <laughs> no. As an investor. Because you just pay a. It's a rip off. You pay a lower rate. It's so the brokers you know. Oh, it's commission? Um, it's, tell, you know, you're the customer. You want municipal debt. Uh, you want income. Your appetite for annual income is higher than your fear of losing par mm -hmm. to tour. I want 10 grand a year, but you're only going to get, we're going to, you're going to be giving us 12 grand. We're only going to give you 10 grand back in five years. That's okay. I told you how much I want each year. It's an income so in order to boost the coupon, lose money on principal over a period of time. That's your investor. And right. investors want that. Right. Makes I'll sense. make a motion to accept our consent. <laughs> 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 Second. Second. All those in favor? Um, seven we zero. Not, nothing on eight. Well, I don't think anything. I'll, I'll take it. Because I want to go home and watch the rest of the selectmen's meeting from last night. Oh, good God. How late did it go? But plus, I recorded, so I couldn't even tell what time it was, although I kept hearing the clock chime. Oh, my gosh. You're talking about last night's selectmen's meeting? Yeah. 
So we're done then. Oh, so we Oh, that shit. That's a long meeting. No chairs? Not that comfortable. Oh, is that right? Yeah. We had a couple of recesses, so it really. Wow, that is a long meeting. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe so, next for the next three, two, three, three meeting. Yeah. Do we need to approve the minutes? Yes, oh. we do. Oh, yes. That wasn't there either. <laughs> I have a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Vanessa. Discussion? No further discussion? All those in favor of the meetings that the minutes as presented? Opposed? One abstention, is that? Two. Two? I think, right? Okay, so we get uh, five, five, two. there, so five, zero, with two. Um, one last thing, uh, sometime between now and November town meeting, uh, Caitlin and or Brenda is going to set up a pre-town meeting meeting. So uh, typically the chair is invited if you're not available. But in any number, you can come. Uh, usually one or two is fine. Uh, just so you know, she's going to be reaching out to you in the next week or two. That wasn't the November 9th thing. What's well, that? I don't know. It was labeled no. audit committee. Yeah, it's okay. the audit yeah. committee. For yeah, I, think she'd probably, I think she'd probably do it to one of these. It was a stealth all. operation. Yeah. <laughs> and what's do the purpose? we? Yeah, what's the purpose? Yeah, it was an audit committee. The um, usually the chairs of school committee, libraries occasionally, uh, selectmen, FinCom, moderator, and staff sit down and talk about the upcoming town meeting. Are there any constraints on someone's schedule? Sometimes people say, I have to present this night. I'm not available another night. But you know we've already set the warrant in a certain order, so we have to take things out of order. Um, this is a one-night town meeting, unless the plastic bag thing goes up to a second night, as far as I can tell. It's not. It's not that it's complicated in here. So this is sort of a less necessary pre-town meeting. Will that email go out? Uh, will that email go out to all of us? No. Oh, just for the chair. Just probably the chair, maybe the vice chair. Can we go if we want? That's a good question. I don't think it's a public meeting. So it's up to uh, speaking of public meetings, do we need to post for next Wednesday's Yes for Reading event? Do we think that there, there will be a quorum of us present? Because we had talked about that before, because you had mentioned it and asked if we could go, and then we were trying to figure out. If we all show up as private citizens, I think as long as we're not deliberating. Right. Like the selectors, yeah, I mean, like this form, but there was. We didn't post them. No big deal. Couple of us are deliberating. We can't all deliberate. Be the same party. Right, they just session a while back. School committee members. Let's post it. Yes, we're ready. We're technically meeting, but anyone can speak. That's okay. You just can't take action. Because we want to be taking action. Right. No, there's nothing to take action. Exactly. Yeah, for that one, it's probably more of an optics thing. Right. I feel like see both sides of the optics on that. <laughs> yes. What? Or oh, good for them. They're being transparent. I don't know. I'll ask town council. Yeah. Well, do we have? A, is there a possibility that there would be more than five of us there? I think there could be. Could one. be uh, yeah, there could yeah. be. Where, where are they meeting? Public building. Or uh, the I church. Um, yeah. No. So, yeah, it's, so a it's, a it's a church here. Church. Yeah. Yeah. That might matter. I'll ask. I'll ask town council. Yeah, I expect to go. I was asked to speak, so I'm going. <laughs> yeah, and in turn, yeah, and when you speak about optics, I've heard concerns about you know people right, meet people gathering case? without having right, posted notice, speak. and I don't want us Where to be. Speaking as the FinCom chair, that may change things. Exactly. As opposed exactly. to just just going and hanging out. Well, I think Probably. is the are the selectmen posting for that? Because First I've heard of it, so I because I think. In um, some of the John um, Arena is information, John is speaking as the chair. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Who's the means? I guess that's what I can. Sometimes I have things on my calendar. No. 
I mean, regardless of which side of the issue we stand on, I think it's still a good event to go. I mean, generally, it's, in my opinion, it's generally better to post mm -hmm. a meeting than not mm -hmm. post, but there's always special circumstances. And even even if we're not taking action, if there's any way, you know, because I know, you know, the way people get in trouble with sending emails that are that are anything beyond scheduling, yeah. um, we're not going to be taking any official action. But if there's any way that you know we just started chatting, I, I don't know. Say, Do we need to have minutes if we have a meeting? As the chair, and then other members are asked questions. Yeah. Then it's it's member. Right. But it's still not. A I mean, I don't have a problem with the post, but there's no deliberation. There's nothing to yeah, deliberate. We don't vote on anything yeah, pertaining to the If you do, then do we have to have minutes? Huh? If, you're, if, you're, if, if you have a quorum and you're posted and thus there's a meeting, yes, you need to have minutes. That's right. Got to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> and where it is, I, I don't know how that impacts it. I guess a church is a public building, but not the same as a municipal building. Mm -hmm. So right, we don't know if that matters. And if you're meeting at a restaurant, same exact set of facts. I don't think you'd have to post. I don't think. Not you don't think so? I don't think so, because technically you can only have a meeting in a public building or a public location. So. And the, a restaurant wouldn't be. Oh, that's it. I didn't know that. I did not. Okay. It depends. If it's it covered in one of those invitation onlys in the back room of a restaurant, it's not open to the public. But a church, you can be removed from a church. It's not a public building in the sense that that's true, they yeah. can't they could say, yeah. who attends. Yeah. That's sounds, true. Like check with sounds like we're going to find out. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, and I'll find out from John if any of the school committee is against the first I've heard of it. Yeah, I think, I think the chairs meet to the committees. Okay. Well, did, I feel like it, we talked about it at the last meeting, like, really? and we said, like, oh, should we post Oh, maybe. Oh, or you could go and nobody talk to each other if there's five, more than five of you. So we, I feel like we did, we did like raise it as an issue at the last meeting without resolving it. So, which is why I'm bringing it up because I feel like it was raised but not resolved. I mean, let's see what Ray says. But yeah, I don't see there being an issue that selectmen were here tonight without having posted. Yeah. Um, I could see some people <laughs> maybe concerned. But they speaking of selectmen, obviously, tonight, I'm trying to the comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's impossible to really say. Well, but they can, they can speak, but they yeah. just, they right. didn't speak to each other. <laughs> about, well, but the, it's not like they didn't decide on an amount. They didn't decide on it. There if was they no discussed the procedure of calling an override, that's, that's their thing. Right. That would have been, I'm speak, I have to be speaking as a selectman. I can't be speaking as a resident. If they're talking about, like, barrier with the budget process, that's not anyone can be saying. Yeah. Meeting law gets way too complex. Mm. I don't think we're but I think we'll we don't want to run afoul of it. That's my <laughs> my only concern. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. I'll find out. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, Second. Second. Oh, no, we no, did, you right? did. Yeah. 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 Listen, you're still hung yeah. up on the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I hear a second? Second, if just in case. We all went second, whoever you want to pick. Paul can second. All those in favor? Opposed.